goodness. Officer, please, come quickly. Bonjour, mademoiselle. How can I... Uh... It has become a madhouse. Madame has been shouting and cursing all morning. I've never seen her so angry. But what great luck to happen upon you. Please, try to remain calm. Uh, first, may I ask your name? We don't have time for that. Please, hurry. Mademoiselle, now we are here, I must insist on your name before I can continue any further. I am Officer Hercule Poirot. I am Elizabeth, but it is the maid servant that we must consider. Forgive me, Officer, but are you new to the area? I stand out so obviously. I mean no offence, only I have not seen you before. This is a small town, and you learn everyone's faces very quickly. Very observant of you, Mademoiselle. Oui, I was recently posted here from the city. And a good thing I'm here now. Let us get to the bottom of this madness you speak of. There has been a theft at the house. Then I am exactly where I should be, Nespa. It is only one of Mademoiselle Angeline's most valuable bracelets taken from her room. Then its safe return is of the utmost importance. Madame Van den Bosch, the lady of the house, believes Florette is behind it. I'm afraid I do. I know Madame is confident of Florette's guilt, but she wouldn't do such a thing. Surely a burglar is responsible, as Mademoiselle believes. Merci, Mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. are beginning to become clearer. Of 
course, officer. How can I help? One set must be mine, leaving to find you. The other set must be Florette's. She was caught in the rain this morning. There is, sir. Luke. But he was called away from the house on a personal matter. Rahana, our cook, accompanied him. Merci, mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. Aha. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Another success. I never doubted myself. guess, I would say a moment of genius. Officer, how can I help? Excuse me, officer? The carving on the bench. Forgive me, I was not suggesting anything untoward. Oh, of course not. Yes, <laughs> I suppose there must be. Would you know the identity of the mysterious L and E? I'm afraid not. Perhaps they were old residents. A pair of star cross lovers, perhaps. Madame does not allow distracting staff relationships. Love is not something that can be harnessed so easily. That is Madame's rule, and I wouldn't want to be the one that challenges her on it. Merci, Mademoiselle. Hmm. 
magnifique. What a revelation! I have conducted my initial inspection of the house and grounds. It is now necessary for me to speak with those in the house. Of course. Thank you, officer. I'm sure Madame Van den Bosch will be happy to hear the police are investigating. Who are you? You are not the commanding officer I requested. No, dear madame, I am Officer Hercule Poirot. I can assure you that I... This will simply not do. I sent Elizabeth to bring me a competent lawman. And that is what she has brought, madame. Now, I would like to continue my investigation. You understand correctly. It is my daughter's bracelet. It is a rather expensive piece. And valuable to your daughter, no doubt. It was a gift. Yes, it was from her late father, my husband, the Viscount. And it has not gone missing. It was stolen. I do not believe so. I know so. It was Florette, the maidservant. I knew I could not trust her. And why is that? Because I don't. I do not need to explain myself any further, especially to a measly officer. Hmm. Don't be ridiculous. I have told you who is guilty. If there had been a break-in, surely it would be your job to stop them. If it was the case, of course, madame. Although I cannot predict a burglar's movement. Perhaps then you have proved me right, and you aren't the competent officer I require. Merci, madame. You have been most helpful. Oh. 
Huh. Pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Really, officer, you are wasting both your time and mine. Only if you are prepared to take Florette away. It is an offense to incarcerate someone without suitable proof of misdeeds. I must question Mademoiselle Florette to gather her version of events. If you will not do your duty and lock her up, then I must. She shall remain there, and I, the keyholder, until she is led from the room in handcuffs. And what is your point? May I ask of the subject? You may not. Honestly, your prying is getting on my last nerve. Merci, madame. You have been most helpful. Mademoiselle Elizabeth, I hope you are feeling less distressed now. I can assure you I shall find the guilty party and the bracelet. Thank you, officer. Yes. All I want is for Florette to be heard. Bien sûr. Rest assured, she will get the fair trial she deserves. I wonder if you could help me with some questions regarding the house. Of course. Whatever I can do to help. When I left, Madame was with Florette in there. Surely she would not have locked her in. It must have been an accident. Madame Vandenbosch should not be deciding her fate. Would you grant me access to speak with her? I would, sir, but I don't have the key. There is a spare somewhere, though. Oh, how awful the thought of her locked in there! Do you have any thoughts as to where I may find it? I'm sorry. Madame does not trust the staff with such knowledge, even me. Although I did overhear her once say it was hidden somewhere, close to her heart. Whatever that means. Merci, mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Certainly, officer. Madame is the one with the refined taste. Angeline and I are much more partial to a simple love story. Aren't we all? Romeo and Juliet, the most famous of love stories. <laughs> I do enjoy it so. The passion, the romance. It gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. Madame has a copy, upstairs in the main hall. Merci, mademoiselle. Your res...
What a revelation! What do you think you're doing in here? Who let you in? Mademoiselle Angeline, I presume. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Officer Hercule Poirot. An officer of the law? But what are you doing here? Don't you need to be chasing down the burglar? Your bracelet has gone missing. It is only correct. I speak with all members of the house and investigate the scene of the crime. Ah, if we must. Uh, merci. I will attempt to take up as little of your time as possible. It is of great value. Monet was no object to father. It was a gift from your father. I can only assume it holds great value to you also. Of course it does. What a silly thing to say. It's a good thing Maman had it insured with the others. Some rats stole my bracelet this morning. Even though it's clear someone has broken in, Maman refused to listen and blamed Florette. You sound very convinced it was taken by someone from outside of the house. My window was open when I returned. How else can you explain that? It must have been while I was down at breakfast with Elizabeth. She was with me all morning. Mademoiselle Elizabeth was with you until you discovered the bracelet was missing? She was. She woke me up later than usual. I washed and dressed, and we went down to the lounge for breakfast. You have been of great help to my investigation, mademoiselle. I will do everything I can to find the culprit and return your bracelet. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Anna 
their success. I never doubted myself. The longer you are here, the further the criminal goes with my bracelet. But by all means, fire away. Is one bracelet not enough? Oh, why don't you believe me? I wish you hadn't spoken to Maman. As I have stated, it is my duty to speak with every member of the house, and I would not want to have discovered a further missing piece later. How should I know? I returned to the room and father was face down on the floor. It must have been the burglar. So it is your father that is the subject. Isn't he handsome? I remember watching him sit for it. He kept looking across and smiling at me. <laughs> the artist was getting awfully angry at him. Maman never wants to talk about him. She says it's too hard, but she acts more like she doesn't even care he's gone. I'm sure that is not the case. It must have been very hard for her, for you both. I miss him every day. He always knew how to put a smile on my face. <laughs> I remember how much fun we would have, all three of us. In the summer, father and I would play hide and seek while Maman read. She always helped me, though, whenever it was his turn to hide. I would stand in the gazebo, cover my eyes, and count, and when I turned, he was nowhere to be seen. Maman would lower her book and flash a look towards his hiding spot. After I found him, he clapped and cheered, as though I had won a gold medal. When I was hiding, it didn't matter where I was. He could never find me. I always thought, I was an expert hider, but when I think back now, I know he was letting me win. He always said my smile was prize enough for him. He always knew just what to say. I am sure he would want you to be smiling today, even under such circumstances. You have been of great help to my investigation, mademoiselle. I will do everything I can to find the culprit and return your bracelet. Certainly, officer. Now I think of it, I don't recall seeing her memento tin. She holds her keepsakes from her father and other gifts or tokens in it. She has such a wonderful collection. She's very lucky. She normally keeps it close, but I didn't see it this morning. Merci, mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. Finally, it is unlocked. What exactly do you think you are doing? If I am to serve justice, I must be able to reach and talk with young Florette. The girl is guilty and shall pay the price for her crime. I shall see to that. If you wish to listen to her feeble attempts to explain herself, so be it. Everyone deserves to tell their side of the story, whether a feeble account or not. <laughs> uh. 
Mademoiselle Florette, I presume. Please, officer. I did nothing wrong. You can't take me away. Uh, please relax, my dear. If you have done nothing wrong, you have nothing to worry about. But it is my duty to investigate all avenues. Ah bon? Relax. So you don't think I took the bracelet? As of this moment, I cannot say. But answering my questions honestly will certainly help your case either way. I didn't even know it was missing till I got accused of taking it. Madame was so angry. She wouldn't listen to me. There must be some reasoning behind her accusation. How could I have taken it? I've been in town most of the morning. I was even late coming back. Then I was preparing breakfast. Rihanna the cook is away, so I had to fetch breakfast for the house and prepare it all myself. How does she expect me to do that all on my own? From what I understand of Madame Vandenbosch, she would not have been best pleased you returned late for breakfast. Not best pleased? I thought she was going to batter me to death with a baguette. I hid in the kitchen and then tried to stay out of sight in the lounge until breakfast was over. Didn't want to put my head near her jaws while she was still hungry. Perhaps a brave move under the circumstances. And you did not go upstairs at all. Madame was singeing a hole in the back of my apron with her glare. I daren't have moved. I was too scared to blink the wrong way. Never mind stamping upstairs. I must just be slow, monsieur. My mother always said I um, moved like the snail. Maybe I was just happy to be out of the house. I had a lot to do. I lost track of time. I wanted to prove to Madame I'm not the useless waif she thinks I am. Merci. I shall take everything you have told me into consideration. Aha.
magnifique. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. Things are beginning to become clearer. Magnifique. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Another success. I never doubted myself. Pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Anything to show you I didn't do it. And Madame, I need this job, Monsieur. Yes, another thing on my to-do list. I'm afraid it's not in the same condition as when I picked it up. At whose request? It was a favor for Lizzie. I didn't mind having to get it. Merci. I shall take everything you have told me into consideration. Certainly, officer. The lounge? A package? Oui, it is quite hard to miss. Oh, how silly of me. I must have had my head in the clouds this morning. I'm sorry, I can't help you further. Besides the terrible rain? No. I woke, began my duties with Mademoiselle. I had already laid out a clean dress. I helped her into it and prepared her for the day before getting started on tidying her room as neat as a pin. And the bracelet was still there when you left the room for breakfast? I'm sure of it. I had it down before Mademoiselle Angeline. Why, yes, officer! I misplaced it after wiping a stain from Mademoiselle Angeline's sleeve at breakfast. You are a great detective. You are not the first to say. Had she not noticed it herself, 
I imagine Madame would not allow even the smallest imperfection. It baffles me how she couldn't have. It was only luck that I spotted it before Madame, and a good thing I did. Madame is under a great deal of strain. It can't have been easy for her to lose her husband, raising Mademoiselle alone. She can be quick to anger. And this morning, it sounds as though it was such an occasion. It's not the first time I have had to stand and watch such treatment. I hate to see it. As I said, Madame hasn't had the easiest time. Madame's scolding of Florette this morning was the worst I have seen her temper. I wish she could see that Florette is just trying to do her best. Could there have been another reason for such a reaction? Madame was not happy Florette was late. All through breakfast, Madame was watching her with a piercing eye. But she's still learning the way. Merci, mademoiselle. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. Things are beginning to become clearer. What a revelation! Certainly, officer. How could I not be? I may not enjoy his other works, but how can one not be blown away by a story of two so deeply in love that they will risk everything just to be together? Especially being able to draw similarities between Verona's star-crossed lovers to yourself and your dearest. But I hadn't told. Mademoiselle, I am an officer of the law. It is my duty to uncover the truth. Please, you cannot say anything to Madame. She is against staff relationships of any kind. In her eyes, a relationship between staff is nothing more than a distraction. But he means so much more to you. Oh, officer. I have found my soulmate. At first, it was nothing more than pleasantries around the grounds. But that quickly changed. I know it's not proper for a young lady to pursue a gentleman. But... Once I knew his feelings reciprocated my own, why shouldn't I have followed my heart? Love transcends professional and societal rules. The mere thought of him was enough to make me blush. But I knew that Madame would never give her blessing. If we wanted to continue, we would have to do so in secret. The summer evenings here are just so beautiful. I often find myself walking around the grounds after my daily duties are complete. And it was one such evening that Luke was waiting for me at the gazebo. He looked ever so handsome. And the poem he had prepared. He had barely started reading and I was already a blubbering mess. Standing there beneath the warm glow of the falling sun, he asked for my hand. And I gave him my heart with no hesitation. Oh, I'm sorry, officer. I've been chattering on for so long. You have much more pressing matters than to listen to me rambling aimlessly. One should never apologize for such a charming and bewitching story of love. But you are correct. While the culprit still eludes us, my work is not yet complete. Merci, mademoiselle. Thank you. 
I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Magnifique. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. The longer you are here, the f Maman is never happy with anything these days. Also, Florette does have a habit of not doing things exactly how Maman wants them done. And how does she react when she sees Florette not doing things the correct way? Maman has the temperament of a kicked cat. Florette has often been on the wrong side of it. Uh, that is how she responded today? She was shouting at her. And when Florette would not admit she took the bracelet, Maman really lost her temper. I have not seen her that angry before. You have been of great help to my investigation, mademoiselle. I will do everything... Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. Another success, I never doubted myself. Too close, so is forever spitting onto the floor. Merci for the warning, mademoiselle. Anything to show. She never used to be such a witch. When the Viscount was alive, she was much nicer. He was the head of the house, he gave the orders, and he treated us right. I would have gone long ago, monsieur, but my family can't afford for me to be picky about my employment. I was not aware you were supporting your family, and at such a young age. Papa lost his job at the factory just before he left for good, so Mama had to work even more. I was old enough, so I went to work. When I joined the Vandenbosch house, the Viscount was very kind. I didn't think he would care, but he wanted to help. He gave me some extra in my first pay pack, enough to keep the landlord from kicking Mama out at least. 
No one had ever been that nice before. I didn't know what to say, but all he wanted me to do was work hard for her. He even let me to go home and visit Mama and my brothers at Christmas with a food parcel from the kitchen. Mama said she had never seen so much food. It's always been hard for her. Even before he left for good, Papa wasn't around much, and even when he was, we both wished he wasn't. My brothers were too young to remember what he was like, I hope. When I walked in Mama's house, everything seemed so much smaller. I must have got too used to the size of this house. I swear, you could fit our house in just this lounge. We didn't have much, but we didn't want for much. It was simple and it was home. The valuables in the house do not determine the love it shares. Someone should tell Madame that. Not that she'd listen anyways. I will uncover the truth of what happened today, Mademoiselle. That, I promise you. Merci. I shall take everything. Really, officer, you are wasting both your time and mine. If you have something to ask, officer, I suggest you stop wasting my time further and just get on with it. And this is how she repays me? I will not be happy until I see her sufficiently punished. you have finally come to your senses and have seen her guilt. It is challenging at times, I will admit, but I can assure you the Van den Bosch name is as strong and prevalent as it has always been. I have tried my best to provide for Angeline, although sometimes she may not see it that way. She is not to know about what we have discussed. It is my burden to carry. You are accepting the hand you have been dealt and raising a fine young mademoiselle. That is all that can be asked of you. And you have done nothing but bother my staff and my family. I cannot stand here any longer and listen to this second-rate officer speaking such drivel. are beginning to become clearer.
The longer you are here, the further the criminal goes with my bracelet. But by all means, fire away. You have been of... Certainly, officer. You have found the culprit. And the bracelet. Everything will be revealed in good time. Would you be so kind as to gather everyone in the lounge? Of course. Merci, Mademoiselle Elizabeth, for gathering everyone. Will Madame Van den Bosch be joining us shortly? She stormed past me not long ago, and I have not seen her return. Very well. Under usual circumstances, I would wait. But I think we have spent enough time on this matter, n'est-ce pas? We shall have to proceed without her. This morning started like any other. My usual ordinary patrol. Until I was approached by Mademoiselle Elizabeth about a suspected burglary and a missing bracelet. A crime I've been falsely blamed for! That I shall come to. I began my investigation outside, but it was not long before I realized there were no signs of an intruder. So I turned my focus to those in the house. You. Florette, your time here at the house has not always been the easiest for you, shall we say. I do what Madame tells me. And to the highest standard, I presume. Madame's standards are very high. I do my best. And you would at least expect fair treatment for the work. Not to be spoken to in such a cruel and vicious way. Monsieur? I refer to how poorly Madame Van den Bosch treats you. You are at her beck and call, and she does nothing but belittle you. That is Maman you're talking about. Just wait until... It is nothing but the truth I speak, Mademoiselle. Mm. All the while, Mademoiselle stands by and does not even notice such cruelty. That must have angered you. I... Perhaps you thought it was time they deserved some retribution. Stop trying to put words in her mouth. I am merely giving her a voice, one that has been silenced for so long. Maybe I do think she deserves it. She's had the world handed to her on a plate, and the likes of me get nothing. A motive begins to rear its head. You're just trying to get me to admit to something. Well, I've done nothing. Uh, allow me to finish. I am sure you will want to hear what follows. Let us return to this morning. I was only trying to help Lizzie. You must have known how Madame would have reacted to your late return, especially with her prior treatment of you. She's angry at whatever I do. But nonetheless, you were willing to help a colleague, a friend, knowing what the repercussions could be. And that show of loyalty to your friend has been the thing that proved your innocence. Monsieur? Because of such willingness to help, you were delayed in town. Meaning, you had no viable way of taking the bracelet from Mademoiselle Angeline's room. There was simply no opportunity. I told you! Maybe now Madame will believe me. It is evidence not even she can ignore. Which then leads us to Mademoiselle Elizabeth. Mademoiselle Elizabeth, you have been with the Van den Bosch family for quite some time now, correct? That is correct. You have grown close with both ladies of the house and your fellow members of the house staff, would you say? Of course. And I certainly hope they feel the same. Um... You yourself told me Madame Van den Bosch would not stand for it, and you would both be out of a job. Elizabeth? What is he talking about? A love that is reminiscent of Romeo and Juliet. One that must remain hidden from the world from fear of expulsion. If you don't stop, I will tell Maman. You can't speak to her like that. It may be a tone you do not like, 
But it is no worse than your maman's ruling that forced them into secrecy to begin with. I'm sorry. This isn't how I wanted you to find out. We couldn't risk Madame finding out. I don't know what I... we would do without this house. What are you talking about, Elizabeth? Luke and I... we... we are in love. Luke? The gardener? But why wouldn't you tell me? For fear of Madame and her rule, and if neither of you had employment, there would be no way to pay for... a wedding, perhaps. It was never our plan to go behind yours or Madame's back. You must believe me. You two are to wed? Yes. Well, no. Not today, as Officer Poirot suspects. Please, it's not what you think. It is not always what one thinks, or how something may appear. Rather, where the evidence points. And that is to Mademoiselle Angeline. You can't believe I would hide my own bracelet. I have nothing to say. How dare you speak to me like that? You have no idea what you are talking about. You can't actually believe I would hide my own jewelry. If you didn't, explain to me how your memento tin with the bracelet inside came to be lodged inside the chimney of your bedroom fireplace. You have no proof I put it there. Besides you being the only one in the room alone, even after finding the bracelet, I still did not know why you had done it. Until I contemplated why Madame was selling so many heirlooms and art. You had no right to snoop through our house in the first place. When it is part of my investigation, I have every right, mademoiselle. The unpaid bills and final notice from the telephone company. Maman can do what she wants with her art. That means nothing. But when there was no more art to sell, what then? You could not risk her taking your father's bracelet and selling it. <laughs> so... You staged a burglary pretending it had been taken, preventing her from selling it. Then you stood back as the innocent Florette paid the price. She didn't think about me at all. She was going to take my bracelet and sell it off. It would have just ended up on some old wrinkly wrist. I didn't think Maman would blame her. I didn't think she would do anything. But she did. And somehow that evidently didn't cross your mind. When Madame returns, you shall have it all to explain. Maman can't know what I have done. She will be furious. But Mademoiselle Florette will be proved innocent. And that is what is important. No crime has been committed. So I see no reason why this should continue any longer. It is time you considered the consequences of your actions. And now, you must face them head on. Maman, you're home. Of course I am. And I've brought someone that will bring some order to this chaos. Major, I can assure you I have this situation under control. From what I have heard, you are far from it. The missing bracelet has been found, and the guilty party has been identified. I am well aware that the maid servant was behind it all. And yet I see her standing as free and innocent as you and me. I am sure Madame Van den Bosch has informed you of her suspicions, but I am afraid it was merely speculation. Excuse me? After conducting a full investigation, the evidence and facts led me to deduce I certainly hope you are not accusing my daughter of... I'm sorry, Maman, he's right. Florette is innocent. I just wanted to show you. Shh, girl. I will not have you guilted into taking the blame for that sticky 
Lucky fingered girl. Perhaps it would benefit you to remember you are nothing more than a simple officer of the law. Officer Poirot. A word. Madame van den Bosch was forced to make her way to inform me, alone, I might add, of the goings-on at the house today. Major, with all due respect, she was impeding the investigation. This may be how some officers act in the city, but here we show respect to our citizens. You are an officer of the law and should act as such. Insubordination like this will not be tolerated. As the ranking officer, I have conducted my investigation and... Ranking officer? Ha! <laughs> you are an auxiliary officer. You have little authority over anyone, let alone a major. You would be wise to remember who is close friends with your commanding officer. After what I have heard of your past in the city, I'm sure he would look upon today's events as another failure at the hands of Officer Poirot. Oui, Major. Now I suggest you do your duty and escort the maidservant to the station where she can be formally charged and a sufficient punishment handed out. Right away. I am sorry, Mademoiselle. This is not the outcome I expected. Maman was right. We'll always pay the price for the upper class's actions. We will do everything we can to clear your name. What can you do now? Madame said I'm guilty of a crime and I'll be punished. That's that. A crime that was never committed. Once the truth is explained, this wrong shall be set right. Angeline did not intend for you to be arrested. Surely you know her better than that. I should have known better than to expect anything else. Justice and fairness don't reach the likes of me. What you saw today was not justice. In the eyes of the law, you are innocent and have been harshly treated and wrongly accused. No one will be going to jail. But that doesn't help my employment, does it? That I cannot save. But your freedom, I shall make sure of that. Detective Poirot, I trust this finds you well. It has been many years since our paths last crossed, and while I'm sure your recollection of the events may differ from mine, I hope that receiving this letter has not rekindled a sense of animosity toward myself or the Van der Bosch name. The impression you made is something that has stayed with me since that day. It compelled me to reconsider the spoilt young lady I would have inevitably become and help shape me into the woman I wished to be. You made me see the childish and selfish girl in me that did not consider the consequences of her actions or how they may affect others. Although Maman may see the events of that day differently, I believe the compassion you showed for our maid Florette, as well as the drive to uncover the truth and accept no alternative, was a testament to your character and professionalism. Although I wish it were under different circumstances, your assistance is once again required, and I hope you will consider this as my formal request for your service. This forthcoming weekend was due to be one full of joy and happiness at the announcement of my engagement to Gideon Demir, whom I love dearly, 
bringing together two illustrious families, but it has been shadowed by deceit, extortion, and blackmail. The Van der Bosch name is being held to ransom by a mysterious party, and I am afraid I do not know who I can and cannot trust. We are holding a small gathering to celebrate our exciting news with what Maman calls the dignified elite, those that are well respected and held in high regard in both our close inner circle and society. Our private matters have always remained just that, so I fear one of those invited may be the person who is out to ruin our name, but for reasons I cannot fathom. I have enclosed a first-class rail ticket for you to join us for the announcement, and having contacted your superiors and the correct authorities to request your assistance, which they were more than happy to grant me, I shall expect your arrival with great anticipation. There shall be a carriage waiting for you at the station to bring you directly to Mnemosan House. I thank you in advance in our time of crisis. Yours respectfully, Angeline van der Bosch. Bonjour, my name is Hercule Poirot. I am here at the invitation of Mademoiselle Angeline. Ah, Detective Poirot, we have been expecting you. Please come in from this frightful cold. Merci. I don't think I would have lasted much longer out here before turning into an icicle. Welcome. I am Archibald Sterling, the head butler. Please accept my apologies. I have a rather pressing matter, but I will see that you are attended to immediately. Do not trouble yourself on my behalf. I am sure I am more than capable of finding my room. I shall straighten myself up and be ready to join the party. Ah, there is no rush, detective. Dinner will not be served for some time, so please, make yourself comfortable. Once you have settled in, I am sure that Miss Angeline will be happy to see you. She has been eager for your arrival. She's not been herself recently. You will be staying on the first floor. I believe your room is one of the two on the west side of the house. Merci. I am sure we shall speak again soon. Uh-huh. 
Huh. Bonjour. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Detective Hercule Poirot. Detective? <laughs> I hope you're not here for me. Not that I am aware of. Should I be? Ha! <laughs> not often you meet a detective with a sense of humor. I'm Zakari Ademir, but you can call me Zach. If I had seen them, maybe I would have. It is meant to be their celebration, but they're always off, dealing with something or other. Something or other? A rather vague expression. Let's just say they like to keep their cards close to their chest. For such a well-known family, I'm surprised they can keep anything hidden. Would you care to elaborate on what Mademoiselle may be hiding? I'd rather not. You're the detective, isn't that your job? Très bien, Monsieur Demir. You'll be lucky. I've been waiting for a refill for ages. I came out here to find someone myself. Ah, I see. The preparations for this evening's dinner must have taken precedence. I've seen that butler running around like a madman, but there is still no party to speak of. It's pretty clear they need to hire a few more hands. I shall take up no more of your time. A bientôt. Magnifique. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. A 
another success. I never doubted myself. Aha. Huh. Pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. What a revelation!
Hmm. Oh. You must be Detective Poirot. Welcome. Allow me to introduce myself. Gideon Demir. The fiancé to Mademoiselle Angeline. The pleasure is all mine. Angeline spoke so highly of you. It sounds as though you are the man that can sort this terrible mess out. I am, monsieur. You have my word. She tries her best to keep everyone else happy, but I can see it is taking its toll. Quite understandable. She is feeling the burden of the family that is not hers to carry. Angeline has spoken with her mother. She has asked if there is anything that could be used against her. But she was just so dismissive. And what are your thoughts on the matter? I do not want to overstep my position. But if there is something that could damage not only the Vandenbosch name, but our future, Angeline deserves to know. And that is a very diplomatic answer. You have met, madame. You know it is best to not get on her wrong side. Mostly friends of the family. A couple of business associates of mine. Quite a mix from all walks of life. With regards to the blackmailing, can they be trusted or should they be considered suspects? Angeline is struggling to trust anyone right now. But Madame Vandenbosch, as it is her house, thought it was best for us to have them all present. And they will all be staying in the house? Yes, it is a rather full house. All six guests will be staying on this floor. The family resides on the second floor. Uh, as does Felix. I will be sure to speak with them all. However, I will keep my identity and purpose for being here hidden. At least until I have made my initial introductions. I'm afraid that ship may have already sailed. Once the Comtesse gets wind of something, a detective coming to the house for example, you can bet everyone will know. You are very observant, detective. You would be wise to keep that perceptive nature while you're here. I'm sure you are correct, but I'd like to return to your feelings towards the Major. He has been a good friend to Madame Vandenbosch over the years, but that does not make him a good man or suitable to involve himself in family affairs. Merci, monsieur. I shall leave you to prepare for tonight's celebrations. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. Please, ask away, detective. As far as I'm aware, everything is in order. From what I understand, the late Viscount had made some questionable investments. But that is all in the past. And regarding the payment of the blackmail? Angeline does not have to worry about money anymore. I was born into some wealth, and I have earned my own fortune. 
Merci, monsieur. I shall leave... Detective, it looks as though I might be out here all weekend. What can I do for you? I'm a guest. I shouldn't have to go around chasing them. Perhaps the party preparation is more of a priority. It's not my fault they aren't ready. Why don't I wait here while you check in the butler's pantry in the East Corridor? I think I saw a maid go in there earlier. I shall take up no more of your time. A bientôt. Mademoiselle Angeline, it is a pleasure to see you again. Detective, how wonderful you are here. Your travel was not too arduous, I hope? Watching from my carriage window, I saw the beautiful countryside and rolling hills. It was anything but taxing. I'm truly thankful you could make it here at such late notice. No thanks are required, mademoiselle. When one is requested personally, there is nothing more important. Gideon and I only wanted a small dinner to celebrate our engagement, but Maman was adamant on throwing this party. It may have been her idea, but it's the staff that have made it happen. Their efforts do not go unnoticed, from me at least. They have been with us for so long, I do my best to make sure they are happy and content. Only Maman, Elisabeth, my beloved Gideon, and you, of course. And what is your fiancé's opinion of the letters? He thinks me foolish for paying the first one if there is no secret to reveal. But... But you believe there may be a secret lurking. One that Maman is herself keeping hidden. She tells me nothing. Even though I'm a grown woman on the verge of marriage, she still treats me like the child I once was. Perhaps it is out of love that she protects you. It is in every mother's nature to protect their young from hurt. Not a single person. I don't know anyone that would stoop so low. The guests that will be joining us tonight, they are ones you can trust? I hope so, detective. Before the letters arrived, I would not have thought twice about it. They are all close friends of yours, I assume. Friends and colleagues. Gideon has spoken positively about them. It would be a rather underhanded tactic to do such a thing to someone you are doing business with. Oh, detective, I'm afraid I just don't know. She was quite adamant at the police station that she would not be returning to the house, but I assumed she would at least collect her belongings. Maman demanded that Elizabeth pack up everything she had and dispose of it. But I couldn't let that happen. Elizabeth and I took her belongings what little there was of them, to a friend of hers in the town that Elizabeth knew of. But not even she had heard from her. I wanted to contact her, but I had no address or telephone number. Surely Madame must have had some information when she employed her. You saw how Maman was. As soon as Florette was out of sight of the house, it was as though she had never been there at all. Elizabeth was most upset at the news Florette would not be returning. And your mama's choice to ignore her accountability for the girl stopped you searching. Please, detective, you cannot make me feel any worse than I already do. If I could go back and live that day again, you must believe me. I would never have done it.
Yes, Maman has quite a collection, although they are not all to my taste. Most, in fact. The painting of the saints, in particular, it is quite exquisite. Is it connected to the house in some way? The one in the hall? If you look above your bedroom door, you will see one of their names. I believe they were originally carved to watch over the occupants. Merci, mademoiselle. I shall find you if there is anything further I need. Things are beginning to become clearer. Magnifique. Another success. I never doubted myself. Things are beginning to become clearer. Ah, Mademoiselle Elizabeth, what a pleasure to see you again. Detective Poirot, I'm so glad you could make it. Unfortunately, it is not purely for pleasure that I am here. Mademoiselle Angeline requires my attention professionally. Yes, Angeline has told me. I'm glad she called upon you, Detective. I've been rather worried about her. I will do everything I can to find the blackmailer and bring them to justice. I have every faith in you. I hope I am not interrupting you. We are all very busy, as I'm sure you can imagine. After I'm done, I can come to your room and help you with any further questions. Ah, yes. Guests are requested to sign the book when arriving. I believe it gives details to the guests' room locations. It stated the male guests are to be staying in the East Wing. Yes, Madame does not believe in male and female guests residing beside one another. No one escorted you! I am so sorry. Everyone is just so frantic at the moment. Madame has requested all staff prepare for this evening. And you have been tasked with jobs in the pantry. Surely your talents could be used elsewhere. I do as Madame asks. Well, as Archie asks. Monsieur Sterling, yes. I met him when I arrived. A charming gentleman. He did give me some rather vague instructions to find my room, though. I can only apologize on his behalf. He would be mortified. I'm afraid I cannot be of much more help, but I believe you are located next to Mr. De Silva. By all means, the house is yours to explore. Yes, I'm afraid it may be all for show, though. She has not been herself, and it is not only I that have noticed. Madame Vandenbosch? Surely it must have had some effect on her. Madame has carried on as though nothing has happened. 
She has never been one to show emotion, and she doesn't seem to notice how it has affected Angeline. The staff, on the other hand... Angeline means no harm, but there have been some instances recently where she has acted rather sharply with them. I hope not too sharply. A house of two Madame Vandenbosch's would surely be too much for anyone. Oh, yes. Um, well, I'm afraid it is far from a happy ending. Luke is sadly no longer with us. Oh, mademoiselle, I, I was not aware. It's fine, detective, honestly. I'm sorry, but I really must finish this. Bien sûr, mademoiselle. Merci, mademoiselle. Pleasure is mine, detective. Before you leave, detective, I have something for you beside the furnace here from Angeline. She wanted me to give it to you on your arrival. Merci, mademoiselle. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Of course, Detective. What is it? I would not say it in front of the Major, but it is rather hideous. It was a gift from him to Madame from his time overseas. I don't think it even has the capability of writing. A pen that does not write is like a fish that cannot swim. As Angeline describes it, a useless ornament. It's the thought that counts, I suppose. Uh, merci, mademoiselle. Pleasure is mine, detective. Ah. What can I help you with, detective? I was right to pay it, yes? You have read them. What do you think? You were wise to consult me. But bowing to their threat may have only shown that you are willing to pay for their silence. Is the secret they speak of worth so much? I wish I could, but I have no idea. The letter was addressed to me, but I have nothing to hide. Maman took one look at it and disregarded the whole thing as someone's idea of a joke. She looked at it? She is not aware of the second letter? She doesn't know I paid the first. I thought I could make it all go away. 
Did you ask madame if there was a family secret they could be privy to? She said uh, I was to ignore the letters and stop wasting my time with such foolishness. If there was something, she wouldn't tell me anyway. I couldn't ask Maman for the money. She was angry that I had even considered paying it. Gideon offered to help. Uh, pardon, did he not think you foolish for paying? He did, but he said he couldn't stand by and watch me in so much distress. How honorable. We are soon to be married, detective. A loving partnership that faces their troubles together. They are his words. I did not mean anything by it, mademoiselle. You have found yourself a husband that will stand by your side and do what must be done to protect you. I am most pleased for you. As you would expect, she has been in quite a state. It was such a terrible accident. She kept it to herself for almost a week before she even told me. Pardon, how could you not know? Surely his absence from the house was noticed. Maman fired him after he returned to the house. She said he could not be trusted. But Mademoiselle Elizabeth's position was kept? I begged Maman, for them both. But, she said, if he was willing to go behind her back, what else could he do? Falling in love is a far cry from committing even the smallest crime, n'est-ce pas? She has been a kind shoulder to lean on through all this mess, but it is her I worry about. She has been through so much. I was not aware of what had happened, and by mentioning, I fear I may have only made it worse by dredging up the past. Do not punish yourself, detective. You are not to know. I don't think your honest mistake will make much difference to how she has been feeling recently. Merci, mademoiselle. I shall find you if there is anything further I need. Detective, it looks as though I might be out here all weekend. What can I do for you? I shall take up the... Detective, it looks... Is that what he said? <laughs> I can barely understand most of what he says with that accent. I find his accent rather pleasant, reassuring. I guess. Not too helpful when it comes to finding your room, though. You'll probably be the lucky one that has that hideous plant outside the door. I shall take up no more of your time. Another success. I never doubted myself. Things 
things are beginning to become clearer. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Please, ask away, detective. I suppose you think I was unwise to pay it? I am glad mademoiselle requested my help before you fell further out of pocket. Madame van den Bosch had no intentions of paying it. Whether she believes there is a secret that could ruin the family or not. It was an honorable move for you to make the payment. It was certainly no small fee. Angeline is to be my wife, and then we shall be family. As far as I am concerned, my money is our money. Angeline has spoken of it. You made quite the impression on her, detective. I, I feel responsible for what came from that day. Florette's dismissal and Luke's. It is not your fault. Madame Van den Bosch does not like it when her rules or authority are undermined. I try to explain to Angeline the same, but her guilt has not left her. Merci, monsieur. I shall leave you to prepare for tonight's celebrations. What a revelation! I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Ah. Oh.
magnifique. Aha. Mm -hmm. Aha. Oh. Huh. Hmm. Elizabeth, thank you for coming. I shall not take up too much more of your precious time. Not at all, Detective. I had best not be away for too long. Madame would not be pleased when there is so much work to do. Well, Mademoiselle, if anyone was to ask, I required your urgent attention with a delicate matter. Uh, that should be enough to give you a moment's peace. <laughs> thank you, Detective. I have heard whispers, but this town is full of busybodies. It's hard to know what is the truth and what is hot air from socialites trying to outdo one another. I would not have thought you want to join in with such chatter. I'm not, but it can be hard to ignore. I try to quash any talk of it in the house. But it's easier said than done. When the staff are together, it seems to be a competition to see who can dream up the most scandalous rumour. You are a loyal maid and friend. Mademoiselle Angeline is fortunate to have you. It baffles me why they would target her in the first place. She has such a kind and pure soul. That may not be what you remember of Mademoiselle, but she has grown into a kind-hearted young lady. I was wary of that when I arrived, but I myself can see a change in her, a, a maturity. And if it is as kind and pure as you have stated, she should not be troubled by the letter. Letters, Detective. I brought you the other. I have tried to tell her not to think any more on them, but she fears that even a fabricated story could ruin the family name. She even frets at what it may do to her engagement. 
I have met Monsieur Demir, and I cannot see his love for Angeline diminishing at something so trivial. Merci for bringing this letter to me. Merci, mademoiselle. Pleasure is mine, detective. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. What a revelation! Of course, Detective. What is it? That is news to me, Detective. The deeds to the house that have been left on the table. Perhaps I am jumping to a hasty assumption. Oh no, Madame asked Archie to inquire in town about having the house registered as a landmark. It's a shame the snow is so thick. The gardens are quite wonderful in full bloom. Perhaps you will be able to walk them when the snow clears. She will no doubt be with Master Gedeon. The party was just beginning when I came upstairs. That is my cue to make a grand entrance. Am I presentable enough for the creme of society? Quite handsome, Detective. Merci. If you catch me snoring, please poke me in the ribs. I will use Madame's sharpest poker. It sounds as though someone else may have already been poked. Ladies and gentlemen, please, if you would be so kind to return to the party. With all this excitement out here... I believe that is an end to the excitement, as you put it, Monsieur Demir. Ah, oh, thank God. One last match. Uh, bonjour, Monsieur Hagen. I wondered when you would be arriving. At least now you can do your job. Pardon, Monsieur. I have just been assaulted! I want him arrested! I am afraid it is not as simple as that. I merely witnessed you standing up from the ground. This is ridiculous. You know very well what he did. Uh, perhaps you could elaborate on what instigated the altercation. I should have known you wouldn't make things easy. I have met Monsieur Demir. He does not seem one to physically assault someone unless provoked. I hope you're not implying that I started it. I am only stating what I have seen. I was having a private conversation with Angeline. When he interrupted and struck me, that is all there is to know. Oh. 
I would not act any other way. Well, unless I am provoked. You have grown rather close with the Van den Bosch family, it seems. What has my relationship with the family got to do with anything? Why are you even here, officer? Detective. And I was invited by Mademoiselle Angeline, personally. Seems to be mistake after mistake with that girl. Of course I do. What a stupid question. He is scum. Him and his whole family. If I had my way, he wouldn't have even stepped foot in this house. Officer Poirot, are you going to do something about him or not? It is Detective Poirot. And if you refuse to answer my questions, I do not see how I can continue. I just don't know what she sees in him. Angeline could do so much better. I don't think she realizes what she is getting herself into. I can't imagine her living a happy life with that... rogue. I see. Merci, monsieur, for your honest opinion, whether I agree or not. I shall leave you to your cigar and return to the party. Monsieur Sterling, I trust the preparations are progressing since our last meeting. Please, Detective. Archibald is fine. Everything is in order now. Are you ready to join the party? You are head butler of this house. It is a position that warrants respect, and I shall continue to give it, Monsieur Sterling. And I must admit, it is the smell from the kitchen that has my attention more than the party itself. Rehana is quite the cook. But it will still be some time. Maybe you'd like to enjoy a drink while you wait. Some of the guests are already in the salon to your left. And the remaining guests are in the library on the first floor. I will be sure to explore both. Merci. Dinner will be served in the dining room. But the rest of the evening is yours to enjoy. Uh, you have all certainly been working hard, it seems. Oh, very hard. The lady of the house wanted everything a certain way, and that's how it was to be done. It is my responsibility to look after the house and staff, not to resolve petty disputes. I cannot imagine he will be in any mood to attend the party. He often has a cigar to calm down, and if that doesn't relax him, that temperature outside surely will. Merci. You have been most helpful.
I told you, you're barking up the wrong tree. I'm not a reporter. But you're going to want to hear this. You could interview me now. And why would I want to spend my evening doing that? The world needs to know. You want to sell papers, I want the truth to be known. Win-win. Mm, I came here to enjoy myself, not to hear a second string version of... I was there. I saw the whole thing, including who was ruining the show. All right, I'll bite. Let's talk later. Huh. Oh. Ah. Aha. Bonjour. Are you a guest of Mademoiselle Angeline or Monsieur Demir? Do I know you? Where are my manners? I am Hercule Poirot. The lawman. Uh, oui, Monsieur. Detective Poirot. And you are? Ernesto da Silva. A pleasure, Monsieur. I did. But frankly, I have no time for childish school fights. You are not aware of the circumstances that started it, then? I heard something about a cigar. 
Only Felix would be petty enough to get riled up by something so menial. A cigar? Yes, Monsieur Demir had one of Felix's precious cigars. If you ask me, they won't be the real thing anyway. Distinguished gentlemen. <laughs> it was two alpha males going head to head. And Master Gideon came out the victor. Surely we have passed the days where shows of unnecessary brute strength impress anyone. When it comes to the protection of a woman, we are far from it. Man will always return to their most primitive form. Mademoiselle Angeline, the Major has no place to feel threatened. Monsieur Guédion is to become her husband. And he has spent the last however many years supporting them, as he calls it, clutching on to whatever he can. I'm a man of business. I see. Is there a particular area of business that is your focus? Overseas investments, international relations. I also own a number of factories in the city. Très bien. Monsieur has many talents. We work together as partners, yes. You must know the Van den Bosch family well, then. I helped Cassandra, rather, Madame Van den Bosch, if and when she needs me. Merci for your time. It has been most intriguing. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Likewise. You're not from around here, are you? My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a friend of Mademoiselle, soon to be Madame, Angeline. I see. Jacqueline Conrad. No doubt you've heard the name before. I am rather embarrassed to say I have not, Madame. No need for the Madame. I'm not married. Just call me Jackie. Oui, Jackie. Seriously? You don't know who I am? My sincerest apologies. And I thought you Europeans were meant to be cultured. Here's the thing. I'm one of those people you want to know, and not be on the wrong side of. Uh, perhaps it would be wise for me to remain on your good side. It's the best place to be. You wouldn't believe what a couple of positive stories can do for a family name, or a career. And that is what you have done for the Van den Bosch family? A little help goes a long way, and from what I have seen, the ladies deserve some positive support. I heard, and it doesn't surprise me. There will always be someone trying to get something out of someone else. People are only out to help themselves. That is a rather pessimistic way of thinking. But it's the truth. And in my experience, more often than not, it's someone the victim knows, and knows pretty well. You make me question those I consider friends. And maybe you should. If you have something you don't want the world knowing, just keep it to yourself. That's what we call eavesdropping. Uh, pardon. I didn't mean to pry. And with respect, I don't think it's really any of your business. I must take my leave. Allow me to introduce myself. Hercule Poirot. Hugo Beckers. A pleasure. I hope I am not disturbing you. I often find myself at a loose end at parties such as these. I've never been referred to as a loose end before, but it is always good to make a new acquaintance. There is no better way to understand one's purpose in life. I stand up for the workers that cannot do it themselves. You work with a union? 
Union leader, well, that is my formal title. But I see myself as more than just that. So much more. I am the face of the people. A voice in the void when there is none. Very spirited. You have quite the way with worlds. In my line of work, it is essential. Some fight with their fists, but I believe words are the ultimate weapon. I have been working with Gideon for quite some time. We are doing great things together. Great things. I was not aware he was part of the Union. Well, he's not exactly. But he is an ally in the battle we face. Without his support, our uphill struggle would surely be a climb. Hopefully my talks with the Silver will help him see the light. I don't know what you think you heard, but it was a private matter and I appreciate if you kept it to yourself. I can assure you, Monsieur Beckers, your conversation is exactly that, yours. Then maybe we should just leave it there. Merci. If I find myself at a loss again, I shall certainly return. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Magnifique. Another success. I never doubted myself. Monsieur Demir, we meet again. What did I tell you? Call me Zach. You found your room all right then? I did, and the charming room it is. <laughs> I don't know if I would call mine charming, but if I drink enough, it won't matter. 
That's okay. At least you actually care. Not like most of the others here. I'm the groom-to-be's older, more handsome brother. Ah, we. Oui. I see the resemblance now. How wonderful that you can celebrate this occasion together. I'll stop you there. The only wonderful thing about this celebration is the free food and drink. You are not pleased for your brother. Uh, Angeline seems nice enough, but marriage is not for me. What is there to gain from tying yourself to someone for the rest of your life? Besides the money. Recently, not a great deal. Well, <laughs> except for enjoying myself. I was once a field medic in the military. But those days are over. A noble occupation. Did you not want to make it your career? It wasn't my decision to make. I certainly don't miss the battlefield, <laughs> that's for sure. Ah, uh, I'm sure he's fine. You don't need to worry about him. Always the knight in shining armor. Riding in to save the day. Saving the day from who, exactly? Well, if Gedeon is the knight in the fairy tale, Felix is the dragon. Felix the Major! Ha! <laughs> Always there, thinking he is better. Just because he was a major, we all know how he got there. In his mind, that puts him at the top of the chain. Gedeon said they were the Majors, but I didn't think he would miss just one. Ah, it was you that took the cigar. <laughs> me? Okay, detective, you twisted my arm. It was me. But I didn't even get a chance to smoke it. Gedeon snatched it out of my hand. I'm sure he could afford to replace it. Perhaps it is best I take my leave. Allow me to introduce myself. Hercule Poirot. Detective Hercule Poirot? I heard we were being joined by one of the King's finest officers. Oui, madame. I see my name precedes me. Comtesse Margot de Vos. Charmed, I'm sure. It is I who is charmed. Handsome, well-mannered, and a man of the law. I did not expect such a fine caliber of gentleman at this party. Comtesse, your compliments are enough to make a young detective blush. I fill my time mostly with charity work. The number of those less fortunate only continues to grow. How very admirable. One must remain humble. I have been a close friend to the Vandenbosch family for, well, heaven knows how long. You must have known the late Viscount then. Indeed, we had been friends since our school days. His passing was very hard on both Cassandra and young Angeline. I became a sort of protector of them both after his death. A guardian angel, if you will. Work with? I built it from the ground up, detective. My admiration continues to grow. While my husband, the Honorable Count de Vos, is always busy with his duties, I found myself at rather a loose end. I could not bear wasting my days with no purpose. And one day, while shopping in the city, I noticed the abundance of young women living and begging on the streets. Dirty and hungry, without a front to their name. It is horrifying to think of how so many must live their lives while others live a life of such selfish opulence. I hope that was not a backhanded comment on the life I live, detective. Uh, far from it, Countess. You are using your wealth to better the lives of the less fortunate. It is commendable work you do. It is, isn't it?
you will find Felix at the center of any trouble, especially when it concerns the ladies of the house. I understand he has made himself quite at home here. <laughs> what an understatement. He thinks his friendship with Cassandra entitles him to anything and everything in the house, including certain opinions of how young Angeline lives her life. He does not approve of Monsieur Demir? You'd have to ask him. Or rather, speak with Gédéon's brother. He will have something to say about Félix, I am sure. A strapping young man. Angeline has found herself a good one. They certainly make a handsome couple. Speaking with them both, it is plain to see, even to one that is unexperienced in such emotions, that there is a great deal of love between them. When they are together, it is obvious for all to see, even at such a young age. But who are we to judge what the heart wants? He would say that. I mean, financially, yes. But... What else does that man have to offer? I cannot imagine Madame Vandenbosch would be one to request financial help. After Edwin, the Viscount, died, the family was left in a rather unfavorable position. She wasn't requesting, chérie. She was begging. I see. Let's just keep that between us. It's a rather sore subject for her. It has been a pleasure conversing. I look forward to our next tête-à-tête. -tête. Fire away, detective. The major pain in the ass. Why should I? It doesn't take a detective to work out the sort of man he really is. He must have seen it, right? I have my own history with the Major, but that is a story best not told. I think it's a story best told now. It can't be any worse than what he did to us during the war. You fought together in the war? We were on opposing sides. The subject of war is a difficult topic for everyone. Perhaps it is best to discuss something else. If you had seen what I have, what he has done, you wouldn't side with him. I am taking no sides, monsieur. It is just not conversation fit for a party. Perhaps it is... Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. What a revelation! I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. are beginning to become clearer.
Fire away, detective. I have a drink, but thanks anyway. I just would not like to see things get out of hand. Don't you worry about me. I've got it covered. Perhaps it is... I am all yours, detective. You are quite inquisitive, aren't you? I believe it is called small talk. There is small talk, and there is prying. I assure you that is not my intention. Monsieur, please. I know a nosy gossip hound when I see one. We can smell our own. The Major isn't worth a minute of your time, though. You are not a fan of his. I'd hit him with my fan, monsieur. Any man that can treat a lady the way he does doesn't deserve to be in his position. And what position is that, may I ask? Lording over Cassandra like she's the help. He shouts at her like she's a stray cat that's wandered into the house. Madness. It has been a pleasure conversing. I'll... What a revelation! Madame Vandenbosch, congratulations are in order on your daughter's engagement. Thank you. And you are? Detective Poirot. I'm sorry, the name eludes me. Once, Officer Poirot. I investigated your daughter's missing bracelet. Oh, it's you. There is no missing jewelry here today, so we are really not in need of your services. I am here on a rather more pressing... I know why you are here, officer, detective, whatever you are now. Please, just get on with it. Detective, and I promise not to keep you too long. Angeline is her own woman now. She can fight her own battles. She does not need her husband to be stepping in. And what battles would they be? Nothing that concerns you, detective. Keep your volume down! She had no right to do such a thing. As soon as the other ladies get wind that there was a police officer in house, the whole town will know. Perhaps you should be more focused on catching the blackmailer that is holding your family's name to ransom than what the chattering women of the town will say. I care more about what those chattering women, as you so rudely describe them, have to say than the empty threat of an anonymous letter. Your daughter does not agree. In fact, it has been suggested that one of tonight's guests may know more than they are willing to show. The guests? You mean our friends? You can't honestly believe one of them would be so petty to send a letter like that. Oh, officer, you have not changed. You can make whatever assumptions you wish. Based on several accounts, it seems as though the Major has a certain level of disdain for him and his brother. Felix is merely protecting both my daughter and the Van den Bosch name. Protecting them from what exactly? That is a question best asked to them. Gideon is a fine, educated young man from a well-respected family. All important when considering a new son-in-law. 
A good home and education speaks volumes about a man. Even in the short time they have been engaged, his noble character is obvious. If you were an educated man, you would know that. I can assure you, madame, my education is not one to be sneered at. And yet you remain a mere detective. Perhaps it is your choices, then, that are to be questioned. I suppose it is only polite to say you're welcome. Madame is as quick-witted as I remember. What a shame there is nothing as memorable about you but your lack of respect. What do you mean, protecting? She hasn't gone and paid that silly ransom, has she? It was Monsieur Demir that accepted the cost. He paid it because your daughter believes there may be something to hide. For heaven's sake! Why do you think it was addressed to her and not I in the first place? Because they knew I would throw it in the rubbish where it belongs. Madame, if there is something you are keeping, it would be wise to tell me now. It may help in identifying the culprit. And it would be wise for you to stay out of my family's business. If I require your help, I shall ask for it. But don't hold your breath. Merci. An enchanting conversation, as always. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Van den Bosch residence, how may I help you? Yes, yes, of course. Please hold for one moment. Sir? Yes, a call for you. Shall I direct it straight through to you in the study now? Very good, sir. What can I do for you? Yes, he has been here for some time now. Lady Vandenbosch has been very good to let him stay so long. Would you say he has become part of the family? He's always been very vocal about how he stands the ladies in high regards, and so he should. Merci. You have been most helpful. Things are beginning to become clearer. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Magnifique.
Let's make this quick, detective. Locked? That is absurd. They should be constantly coming back and forth from there if they are hiding from their work again. What is it you want in my staff area anyway? I only mention it as I was hoping to speak to some staff members. But if they are busy... Be a good fellow and make sure they aren't slacking off in there. It shan't take you long. Merci. An enchanting conversation, as always. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Oh, monsieur, you startled me. It was not my intention, mademoiselle. I was hoping to talk with a member of the staff. You are the detective? I am Detective Hercule Poirot. I only intend to take up a moment of your time. Oh, Madame Van der Bosch will be very hungry. If she knows, I'm standing talking. Allow me to worry about madame. Inga Frank, detective. From the Norse god of peace and fertility. A most beautiful name. Merci. It was my grand-mère. Oui, detective. Madame was very clear on what was to be prepared for today. Well, everything looks exquisite. But if I may be blunt, would you not benefit from some more hands? Monsieur Archie knows how busy we are, especially in the kitchen. I hate when I have to run service. Merci, mademoiselle. I shall leave you to your work. What a revelation! say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. I am at your service. That is not for me to talk about, Detective. If Monsieur Archie found out I had said anything out of turn... I am not asking you to betray your fellow staff or the family. What is said between us remains that way, Mademoiselle. It's only whispers, but the last servant was caught in areas of the house they shouldn't be. Apparently, they saw something they shouldn't have. Detective, if Monsieur Archibald found that I was talking like this with a guest, 
My lips are sealed, mademoiselle. Merci, mademoiselle. I shall leave you to your work. Another success. I never doubted myself. What can I do for you? What have they done? If I have to... No, monsieur. There is not a complaint to be made. It is more the recent layoffs and extra work pressure you all seem to be under I am inquiring about. We've had to let some of them go. Let's just say their standards didn't live up to what was expected. Merci. You have been most helpful. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Let's make this quick, detective. The public rooms are not adequate space for you to celebrate my daughter's engagement. Uh, Madame, I asked only the limits, as I understand a member of the staff was let go for a similar reason. It would benefit you not to listen to whispers and rumors, officer. They did not produce a satisfactory standard of work. There is nothing more to say. It is detective, madame. And it is just that the termination papers detail the matter and proceed to... Need I remind you again whose house you reside in? Why would I? He is to be Angeline's new husband and my new son-in-law. If he is taking that position seriously, he would do what he must to keep his new family happy. And to you that means paying ransom money? It means doing what he must to protect his wife and his family name. I see you have still not learned any sense of tact or subtlety. I see no reason to beat around the bush, madame. Until you are pricked by a thorn. And until that day, I shall continue with the method that best sells me. Now, Monsieur de Silva. Yes. He has provided some financial support when it has been required. I assume that was the answer you were looking for. Merci. And it Come, my little grey cells. We must think logically. Another success. I never doubted myself.
Is there something else you need? It seems someone has been asking around about me. Only polite curiosity, I can assure you. Well, you would be right. Although working with the Viscount caused me much less grief. Grief, monsieur? Let's just say we didn't always see eye to eye. And if neither side is prepared to back down, there is a problem. Merci for your time. It has been most intriguing. What can I do for you? Ah, perfect timing. I was about to ask that everyone move through to the dining room. <laughs> Très bien. Yes, Maman. Perhaps Turkey. I would love to see my beloved's homeland. I'm sure we will decide on somewhere. Perhaps where we are both yet to have visited. It was my crowning achievement. I am not so sure you workers would agree. Are you sure? I've definitely seen your face somewhere before. I do not believe there is another that resembles these features, or brains, at least. I've always liked the idea of sailing the West Indies. In that heat? With your complexion? Okay, but you lived in the capital at one time. Oui, mademoiselle. I spent much of my working life there. Maybe sleeping off half a bottle of whiskey. Let us not be so blasé with our opinions, brother. If you ask me, I don't believe anyone did. You're that officer! The shootout on the rooftop! Your face was all over our front page! It seems it is not only I that possesses great skills of deduction. You... Please, come quick! The Major has been murdered in his study! Monsieur et Madame, I am Detective Hercule Poirot of the Belgian Police Force. I ask that you all remain calm and in your seats. I shall begin my investigation immediately. Monsieur Sterling, please, lead the way. This is Mr. Hagen's study, Detective. Would you like me to stay? I understand if you are not comfortable with such a scene. Don't you worry, Detective. I've seen much worse in my years. I am thankful to have someone of your resilience by my side. I just can't believe someone could have killed him in cold blood. Is that what you think happened? I admire your faith in your fellow man. But you will be surprised what someone will do when they feel there is no other option. Mr. Hagen does not allow any staff into the study, and they were all present in the staff quarters, or part of the dinner service. And everyone was accounted for? Everyone. It is my business to know all my staff's whereabouts. 
phone call. Yeah, yeah. It was one of his business associates. Do you know what associate? He didn't say. I think he was French. The accent still confuses me sometimes. And did the Major sound any different to you? Panicked? Anxious? Anything out of the ordinary? Not that I noticed. I think he was embarrassed about ending up on the floor after Master Gideon's one punch. I would be. Your help and discretion in this matter are greatly appreciated. Huh. Aha. Magnifique. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. beginning to become clearer. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius.
Oh. What a revelation! Anything I can do to help, Detective? Rahara brought him some ice for his cheek earlier. And when was that? When he returned from his cigar outside, he asked for something to be brought upstairs to ease the swelling of his face. He would normally smoke only in here. Lady Vandenbosch doesn't like the smell of his cigars in the public rooms. Your help and discretion in this... Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. What a revelation! Another success. I never doubted myself. Anything I can do to help, Detective? As I said, Mr. Hagen did not allow the staff in here alone, besides me. He was very clear on that. Have the staff ever given him reason to not trust them? 
Nothing has ever been brought to my attention, but he was very clear no one was to be in here without his permission. I suppose it is not unreasonable. I would have thought with his military past he would have kept it immaculate with not a speck of dust or hair out of place. But the fireplace, for instance, says otherwise. I haven't seen it lit since he has been with us. Even in the colder months. It's been in this state for some time. Your help and discretion... The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Things are beginning to become clearer. Magnifique. Things are beginning to become clearer. Anything I can do to help, Detective? As you wish. Thank you. 
I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. What a revelation! Certainly. What do you need? The male guests, I believe, he knows in a business capacity. But I'm afraid that's all I know. I will add, though, he has not always been the easiest man to get along with. You are talking from personal experience of working for him. I am head butler to the Vandenbosch family in their home. He has made himself comfortable, but to me he still remains... remained... a guest. There's not much I couldn't tell you. As soon as he found out my father was in the army, his stories never stopped. I am sure an officer of his rank must have many a tale. A tale is a fitting description. Not so much a pinch of salt, more like a bag is needed listening to them. You've lost me, detective. I struggle to believe they were both helping her out of the kindness of their hearts. Could they have been fighting for the madame's affection? Ah, that didn't take you long to spot. Your help and discretion in this matter are greatly appreciated. Another success. I never doubted myself. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. Things are beginning to become clearer. Certainly. What do you need? As you wish, detective.
The guests are waiting for you, Detective. I informed them of what has happened, but divulged no details. I am most grateful. Madame Vandenbosch is here also? She's in her room with Miss Angeline. It may be better to speak with them privately tomorrow. Oui, merci. I shall come find you again once my questioning is complete. Is that the end of your... There are still some questions that remain to be asked. I'm afraid our conversation is of a more formal nature this time. So the Major was murdered? It appears so. You can't think that I did it, though. I will be questioning everyone over the course of the evening, and your cooperation will certainly speed up that process. I was here in the salon, minding my own business, enjoying my own company. Minding your business from whom? Comtesse, what's her name, and my brother. Apart from wanting to congratulate him for a great right hook, there was nothing I had to say to him. Comtesse de Vos? And they will both confirm you were here? If she had taken a moment to notice anything besides herself, she will tell you I was here the whole time. I think that is all for now. Merci for your time. Bonsoir, Monsieur Beckers. Merci for speaking with me. Monsieur Poirot, or should it be Detective Poirot now? Detective Poirot is perfect. Merci. I would like to begin with a few questions. Go right ahead, Detective Poirot. I took great pleasure in seeing the Major's ego as well as his face take a bruising. And then I made my way to the library. Well, you spoke with Mademoiselle Conrad. And yourself, yes. We were the only two that you spoke with. One of the servants bought me a drink and I was telling her about the benefits of joining a union. She didn't understand what it truly meant to be a part of something. Something bigger than just her. I was trying to explain to her how... Monsieur. Oh, yes, it was just the two of you and the servant. And you are sure there was no one else present? I'm not sure what you're getting at, Detective. You were there. Merci, Monsieur Beckers. It has been a most enlightening conversation. Monsieur De Silva, merci for obliging me. A detective comes to a party and a dead body shows up. Coincidental, don't you think? A man's death is not a matter to joke on, Monsieur. Who said anything about a joke? 
I am saying what I see. Then perhaps you can tell me what it was you saw this evening. Following whatever that was in the hall, I moved to the library. Is there anyone that can confirm that? Miss Conrad and Beckers were in there, arguing about something. The books held my interest far more than their conversation. You did not speak with them until dinner was served? I had no reason to get involved with their little spat. It was clear they didn't want me to hear, and that suited me just fine. Merci for your cooperation. Monsieur Demir, I am sorry your celebrations have taken a rather dark turn. As am I, Detective. I hope we will be able to bring this investigation to an end post-haste. With your cooperation, I will do my very best. I was here in the salon. I thought I would have a moment of peace to calm myself. But the Comtesse and my brother followed behind. Did they inquire into the reasons behind the fight in the hall? I think they both saw it as some light entertainment, more than anything else. The Comtesse does not strike me as one to enjoy violence. And not so much violence, but karma for the Major, perhaps. You did not hear how he spoke to my wife-to-be. She is still rather upset about the whole thing. If you would be so kind as to stay here, I may require your help further. Countess, I am sorry our next conversation must be under such formal circumstances. It is not the first time Felix has ruined a good party. The current state of tonight's celebrations is the least of my priorities, Countess. Well, it's at the top of mine, Detective. I did not come here for a week. Perhaps then we should proceed with my questions and you can get back to celebrating. It would be my pleasure, chérie. I did. I thought by staying in one place, it would be easy for the staff to bring me my drinks. How wrong I was. And who else was present in here? The handsome groom-to-be and his brother. Although, Zakaria, is it, made a rather sharp exit at one stage. Did he say where he was going? He barely said two words to either of us. I think he was more concerned with his drink. Merci, Countess. If I have any further questions, I shall be sure to come and find you. Mademoiselle Conrad, I am sure you understand the delicate nature of the situation. I knew I had seen your face before. You were just an officer when that story hit the paper. You have a très bon memory, Mademoiselle. That was a long time ago. You can't escape the past, especially when you go and do something like that. That is very true, but one can learn from it and create a better future. What would you say to an inn of- uh, Please, mademoiselle. Catching the Major's killer is my sole concern right now. Now, if you would be so kind, I have some questions for you. I arrived, unpacked my bags in my room, and made it downstairs just in time to see the Major take a right hook from Gideon. And then I went to check out the library. And you were joined by Monsieur Beckers. And Ernesto, or Monsieur de Silver, as you say. But after he ignored my attempt at pleasantries, I left him to his book in the corner. And your conversation with Monsieur Beckers that I uh, interrupted. You are a persistent one, aren't you? Makes sense now I know who you really are. You'll just have to wait and read about it in the paper like everyone else. You have been most helpful. I request you do not go too far. Merci. Another success. I never doubted myself. Hmm. 
magnifique. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. What a revelation! I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Whatever you require, detective. I know you are probably used to dealing with criminals, but not everyone is trying to hide something. I hope for your sake that you do not hide anything from me. What is it you think I'm hiding? I struggle to believe you did not know of Monsieur Da Silva's presence in the library. Is that what this is about? I saw him hiding in the corner, pretending to read. I'd be surprised if he even could. I did not speak to him, and he certainly didn't make any attempt to speak with me. Monsieur Demir invited you here to speak with him. You didn't see that as a fitting time too? I was speaking with Jacqueline, and quite frankly, I was in no mood to be dealing with that man. Merci, Monsieur Beckers. It has been a most enlightening conversation. I'm an open book, Poirot. I told you already, I was here in the salon. And you did not leave even once? Uh, well, I had to use the bathroom. I didn't realize I had to update you every time nature called. <laughs> you may keep your calls of nature to yourself, merci. And then you returned to the salon? If you don't believe me, ask Archibald. He saw me on his way up to the study. I think that is all for now. Merci for your time. Can you confirm seeing Monsieur Demir in the hall this evening? Zachariah, yes. I was on my way with a bottle of whiskey to the Major. He shouted a rather ignorable greeting to me, and asked for directions to the bathroom. I presume you showed him the way? Aye, detective. I showed him to the hall bathroom. I didn't think it was wise to attempt the stairs, not in that state. Things are beginning to become clearer. Another success. I never doubted myself. What a revelation! Magnifique!
I'm an open book, Pardo. Why would I? I've got nothing to say to him. Except maybe to keep his hands off what is ours. What is yours that he could want? Money, of course. Why do you think he has been suckling at the Vant and Bosch teat for so long? He's bled them dry, and now they will all do the same to our money. Our? My father's, Gideon's, it's all the same. When you have not been on level playing fields for years, it's hard to have a fair game. I am afraid I do not quite understand. If we're playing golf, he has a full set of clubs and a caddy, in the form of my father, and I have the old split putter. Make sense now? Perfectly. I think that is all for now. Merci for your time. Whatever you require, detective. I know that I don't think, or didn't think, a great deal of him. I'm just sorry I didn't get the chance to tell him what I thought. The man has recently been murdered. Someone must stand up to men like him, with their crooked dealings and lack of, well, any compassion at all. Another rousing speech, monsieur. It's the truth. If you knew what I know, maybe he wouldn't be dead, but behind bars instead. Yes, Gideon invited me. If you will recall from our previous conversation, we have been working together and he thought now would be a good time to discuss matters. To discuss business at the celebration of his engagement? We're all here, so what better time? He thought Da Silva might even let his guard down, if he was in a more jubilant mood. It would be wise to not continue to ignore us any longer. And what business was it that was so urgent? We're trying to resolve the worker strikes. It has gone on long enough. Now is the time for him to listen to our demands so we can put an end to it all. Put the violence and upset behind us. I am fighting for the basic rights of our workers. Nothing more. If he can't see that, he is a lesser man than I already thought. And where does Monsieur Guédion fit into the negotiations? And his brother? His brother? I didn't even know he had a brother until I arrived here. Gideon certainly hasn't talked much about him. I get the sense there's not much love lost between them. Anger, yes, but that's all. I wouldn't kill a man. You must see why this leads me to have suspicions. You can't honestly think I did it. I am a man of peace. I make changes with words, not with violence. Merci, Monsieur Beckers. It has... More questions, I suppose so. Felix, I didn't know him that well. We spoke a handful of times. I met him through Cassandra. I thought him to be rather pompous. But you remained polite, as any gentleman would. Of course. Thank you. 
He had approached me about doing some business together. I like to know who I'm getting into bed with first. And you both went ahead with your business venture? Not so much a business venture, more security related. But there is no need to discuss that any further. Is there something you wish to remain hidden about your partnership, monsieur? It was far from a partnership. I hired him to run security at my factories. If the workers were going to get violent, I wanted to make sure I was ready to protect my property. What is there to say? She's a remarkable woman. And I admire her. Even after Edwin's death, she held herself with such poise. It sounds as though you hold her in the highest regard. And why shouldn't I? Women these days could take a leaf out of her book on how to present themselves. That is correct. And the reason for your support was always of a purely platonic nature. If you're trying to insinuate that I was expecting something in return, you can remove your head from the gutter. I meant no offense. I am only trying to understand the dynamic of your relationship. Merci for your cooperation. No trouble at all. How can I help? I knew of him more than actually knowing him myself. In the past, he made his feelings towards my brother and I quite clear. And that was not in a positive way. I certainly wouldn't call trying to get Angeline to postpone the engagement positive. What do you mean? I do not mean to pry, only I imagine the whole room was aware of his celebrating with a bottle. You must be mistaken. Neither my brother nor I drink. We aren't the closest, but what brothers are? I would argue that many are. We've lived very different lives. Our priorities are different. He does not see things the way I do. There isn't much more to say. I have lent my voice to some discussions. I have tried to facilitate meetings. Just positive support. Does that positive support include sending letters to those on the opposing side? Detective Poirot, I'm not sure what you think I have done. Monsieur, a letter has been found threatening the Major of what might happen if he does not act promptly, and now he has wound up dead. You think my sending him a letter warning him not to get involved means I murdered him? At this time, it is certainly reason for me to be suspicious. I have been funding the strikes, Detective. These men deserve fair treatment, and a wage that fits the hard work they undertake every single day. The Major didn't see that. All he cared about was the money for his services. And that is all I care to discuss. If you would be so kind as to... I am all yours, detective. Why would I actively choose to speak to that wretched man? You were quite adamant of your protection of Madame. If he was as awful as you portrayed him to be, there must have been some words spoken, or perhaps written? He was quite aware of how I felt towards him, and the lengths he has gone to remain close to the family. That is all that needs to be said. I must admit, I would not want to be on the receiving end of your tongue's wrath, Countess. Wise thinking, detective. I imagine she will have shed a tear for him, but she should not waste any more. You don't think she would, or you don't want her to? I have made it quite clear what I think of that man, alive or dead. I would not want her to waste anything further on him. What 
out of it. Do you believe there was something more to their friendship? As I have said, detective, I am not one to gossip. I would not even consider your name and that world in the same sentence. Because it is not gossip when it's the truth. Why else do you think he would stay around for so long? Yes, he was a friend and partner to the Viscount, but it is plain to see it is Cassandra's partnership he longs for. He was a disgusting leech that was driven only by money and power, like most men. I can assure you not all men are concerned with such egotistical wealth. That may be, but they are few and far between. I believe you are a special case, Detective Poirot. It is not the first time I have been described in such a way. Embrace the compliment, Detective. You have set yourself apart from the horrid crétin that seem to somehow make their way into positions of authority and power. And that is what the Major was doing? Using Madame Vandenbosch as his ladder to the top? You are finally seeing the man he was. A weak and self-indulgent social climber. Merci, Countess. You came to the right place. What do you need? I know that he was not the good and honest man he liked to think he was. In what sense? If you spoke to him for longer than five minutes, you'd know. I've met people in dark alleys I trust before him. And on the occasions when you did speak with him, what was discussed? I'm sorry, Poirot. If you're looking for a deep-seated secret between me and him, you're going to be disappointed. That man has got some real anger issues. I get why he's frustrated. He's trying his best for the workers, but holding on to rage like that, something's gonna burst. If you think you can use me as some sort of gossip machine, you are sorely mistaken. I can assure you it is not a case of gossiping. At this point, everything may be relevant to my investigation. So I would be helping you potentially solve a crime? You should have said that off the bat. To say he's smitten is an understatement. I reckon he's been wanting her for years. I see. Uh, Madame does not feel the same? Doesn't look like it. If she did, she would have said something about it, right? I don't know if you really would. She's got a mouth the size of Texas, except when it comes to truths about her. She wants everyone to think that she's the savior of these girls at the shelter. But there's a side to her I don't think anyone gets to see. And what side is that? One that she is keeping tucked away under her very expensive dress. You have been most helpful. I... I'm an open book, Pardo. That doesn't surprise me, and yet, no one actually asks. I am asking now. I should have expected that, shouldn't I? What is there to say? We used to be close, but not so much anymore. I would find it very helpful if you could at least elaborate on your relationship. He went to school, got an education, and was the apple of our father's eye. I went to war. See the difference now. If you want to know about Gideon's part in the Union, why don't you ask him? So, you are aware of his support for them? Y yes, w well, he... Oui, monsieur? It'd be best to just ask him. I think that is all fun.
no trouble at all. How I believe there are more important matters at hand than talking about my brother and I's relationship, or lack thereof. The murderer is in this house, and by holding back information that may help my investigation, you only make me suspicious of your involvement. Monsieur Demir, if you continue to withhold information, I can only assume you are hiding something, and must treat you as a prime suspect in the Major's murder. I have nothing to hide. If you must know, we have not been on the best terms for years now. As I said, we are different people. He does not see the importance of planning for the future. And as much as my parents tried, they could not make him see that. I suppose that is why he sees me as their favorite. He still believes that now? I assume so. We barely talk anymore. I was hoping we would be able to sit down and talk and leave the past behind. But this evening has not panned out that way. If you would be so kind as to... I am all yours, detective. Countess, you gave me the impression the Major and the Madame were close, but there were times where he acted rather aggressively to her, n'est-ce pas? I am sorry, detective, but I did not mean to give you such an impression. Ever the charmer, detective. I would talk more on it, but I'm afraid Cassandra would think I am talking about her behind her back. It is not often I am swayed so easily. I applaud you on your willingness and persistence. From day one, I was wary of his intentions. And it was not long before he showed his true colors. If it is a tear she sheds, it should be one of joy that he is out of her life. I understand your feelings towards the Major, but perhaps there was... He was a bully. He took his shortcomings out on her, and she sat there and accepted it. I never thought I would see the day. Perhaps now she will be able to see the man he truly was. Karma will always catch up to you. Merci, Countess. If I have any further questions... Pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. are beginning to become clearer. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. More questions, I suppose so. Mademoiselle Conrad was quick to talk of your hidden feelings towards her, perhaps only hidden to Madame Vandenbosch herself. What has this got to do with the Major's death? Does Cassandra know you have spoken to others about this? 
I have only tried to help her. There may be some feelings there, but Madame Van den Bosch does not know of them, and I trust that it will remain that way. Merci for your cooperation. My time with the guests is complete, for tonight, at least. Do you know who killed Major Hagen? I am afraid it is not as simple as that. There are many steps that lead to the truth. I must think on everything I have heard this evening and dissect the truths from the lies. Merci for your assistance this evening. Au revoir. Another success. I never doubted myself. What a revelation! The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Magnifique. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Detective, I'm sorry I did not join you in the salon as requested. Please, mademoiselle. There is no need to apologize. I was with maman in her room. She would not allow anyone to see it, but I could see she was terribly upset. Most understandable. Do you have any suspicions as to who could have killed him? I'm afraid my suspicions extended across all of the party's guests. While it seems as though their alibis all corroborate one another's, the disdain and hostility towards the Major makes them rife with motive. I know there was some bad blood between the Major and some of the guests, but not enough to kill him, surely. She may seem tough on the exterior, but she's really quite kind when you get to know her. The Countess? She is a formidable force I would not want to come up against. 
Don't be silly, detective. She wouldn't hurt a soul. Jacqueline, I mean. I assume that's who you were talking about, detective, after what happened between them. That is a story I have yet to hear. She must have told you about the piece she was writing on us, about Gideon's work and our marriage. Somehow, that was the only thing she did not mention. That's strange. I thought that is what she would have started the conversation with. Well, she had come to the house to interview me, and when I entered the library, she was there with Felix amid a rather heated conversation. Do you know what this conversation regarded? I'm afraid not, but Felix was quite enraged. He picked up an envelope from the table and stormed out, slamming the door behind him. And Mademoiselle Conrad? She was equally heated in the moment. She had a few choice words for him that I wouldn't care to repeat. Better, thank you, detective. She's resting in her room. It is the best place for her. And you, mademoiselle? Huh. I'm not quite sure. It is a rather surreal feeling. I did not think I would miss him like I do. It is understandable. He has been a close friend to your maman for many years. And to me, detective. We had grown close. After father's passing, he was always there for me. And now... He's gone as well. You must try and not think on it like that. It is easier said than done, detective. I have no doubt, but you can be assured. The culprit will not remain at large for long. You have my world. I'm sorry, but I just can't imagine any of them committing such a heinous crime. It can often be hard to look past one's personal feelings for someone and see their flaws. It's not that, detective. It's just they have known each other for years. Why would any of them act now? I was under the impression the Major had merely a business relationship with some of the guests. That's true. But those invited know each other, some of them for years. They may not seem like it, but some are even friends. <sighs> I should return to my room now, detective. It has been a trying day for us all. Oui, mademoiselle. I am afraid tomorrow may bear a resemblance, but I will not stop until I have found his killer. I am certainly glad you are here, detective. When and where a detective is required, that is where I shall be. Bonne nuit, mademoiselle. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. Things are beginning to become clearer. Another success. I never doubted myself. Things are beginning to become clearer.
Good morning, Detective. You slept well? I'm afraid I did not. I was hoping for at least a moment of pleasant slumber, but alas, it was not to be. Finding the Major's killer is the only thing that will put my mind at ease. In that case, Detective, what can I do to help? In that snow? If someone was out there, we'd have another body on our hands. I realize how strange it sounds. I would not believe it myself if I had not seen it with my own eyes. Staff have reported seeing things in the dark before, but it always just turns out to be shadows. It was likely just your mind playing tricks. I'm afraid our Lizzie is not well. I think the events of yesterday were too much for her. We'll have to just make do without her this morning. As Wordsworth once stated, rest and be thankful. Perhaps a chance of peace and relaxation will work wonders. She is currently eating breakfast alone in the dining room. It's how she prefers it. But if you wish to speak with her now... I would, but I'm afraid I found this morning that the telephone lines aren't working. The snow continued through the night and must have damaged them. Even if we could use the telephone, I don't think anyone would be able to reach us. In that case, it will be up to myself alone to solve the case. I'll let you know if anything changes. But until some of the snow clears, enough for the carriages to arrive, we are snowed in. Taken care of. Master Dramir and his brother, after sobering up, helped me move him into the cellar. Best place for the time being. Très bien. I imagine there is no reason for anyone to go down there. Besides me, no one. Once this snow clears, we will be able to move him from the house. Your assistance has been most valuable as always. Good morning, Detective. I hope you were comfortable last night. Bonjour, Mademoiselle. The room was more than pleasant, merci. I'm afraid my mind was not in a state to enjoy it to its full potential, though. I can't imagine any of us slept soundly last night. Hopefully guilt will be weighing heavily on someone's shoulders this morning. I'm sorry if I was not much help last night, Detective. On the contrary, your inside knowledge of the guests was of great help to my investigation. But there are many more questions that require answers. His position? You mean about him living here? Oui, even in a house this size, you must see a lot of each other. I enjoyed having him here. 
When I was away with Gideon, it was comforting to know Maman was not alone. Although, his work with Mr. Da Silva has kept him away from the house of late. What can you tell me about their relationship, working or otherwise? There is not much to tell, only that there is no love lost between them. He was always quite private about his work. I know that he was helping Mr. Da Silva with some safety matters. I found a check addressed to the Major from Monsieur Da Silva. It noted security consulting. Ah, that's right, security. With his military training, he helped Mr. Da Silva prepare for any trouble with the strikes. A development? Oh, detective, I knew I could count on you. It may not be the news you had wished for, though. Another letter has been found. Addressed to me? I don't know how much more I can take of this. Pardonnez-moi, mademoiselle. Although it has been written in the same manner, using similar phraseology, it was not sent for your eyes, rather, the Major's. Or at least that is how it seems. I'm sorry, Detective, I don't understand. It is addressed to him or not? I found it in the Major's study yesterday while conducting my preliminary search. Whether he is the author of the letter or the recipient, I am still yet to discover. Heavens no! He could not do that! You did not hesitate for a moment. Why would he do such a thing? A and then to send a letter to himself? It just doesn't make sense. Merci for your time, mademoiselle. You are to a detective what an umbrella is to a traveler on a wet day. Useful? Exactement. Bonjour, Monsieur Damir. Detective Poirot, how are you? The truth, Monsieur. With each step towards uncovering the blackmailer, I am thrown two steps back as to the identity of the Major's killer. Is there something I can help you with? Archibald came to me and asked for my help in the matter. My brother and I dealt with it. Merci for your help. It is a job that only the professionals should have to undertake. It's a job that had to be done. Although it may have affected my brother more than I. How so? At the sight of the body, the color drained from his face. Once we had reached the cellar, Zakaria took himself straight off to bed, without even a good night. Felix and Madame Vandenbosch are the only ones with keys, as far as I'm aware. Oh, and Archibald. I'm sure I heard Felix asking him to return something to it once. I have not seen him since last night. I'm sure he will have been fine after a good night's sleep. He does not need his younger brother checking in on him. Perhaps that is exactly what he requires. I'm not sure what he told you yesterday, detective. But he is a big boy. He can look after himself. I worry that may not be the case, monsieur. His time in the war came up in conversation more than once during our conversations. He's still talking about it. I thought talking to the doctor would have stopped all of that. Merci, monsieur. Comtesse, I wonder if I could ask you some questions. That is it, detective? No small talk? No inflating of one's ego? I am afraid not, Countess. With the murderer still loose in the house, my mind is rather preoccupied. Well then, detective, perhaps I can be of some assistance. Comment, madame? I thought you might like to know what I found on the Major's body. That certainly piqued your interest. A man has been murdered, and you find it acceptable to fool around and joke. Oh, please, detective. Do you really think so little of me? Archibald asked for my assistance. He knows of my medical training from my days as a nurse, and I thought I would be able to help. Even if it has been some years. It was not his place to grant you access to the body. 
I shall remember to keep my assistance to myself next time. A single stab wound, which you no doubt already knew. The knife was held in their right hand. I would say their predominant hand. Judging by the depth of the wound, I would say there was no great force put into the strike. More a sign of defense than attack. If I had to say what weapon was used, a small sharp knife or dagger. I understand it may be difficult for one to keep such information to yourself, but I ask you to try. Your involvement has already tainted my investigation. <laughs> You are welcome, detective. S'il vous plaît, Comtesse, keep this information to yourself. Pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. If it will help you find the Major's killer, of course. When he returned from the war, he was a different man. Everything became about what he had seen. I cannot speak from experience, but I can only imagine the horrors he must have witnessed. The first weeks he would wake in the night, screaming. I found him one night, cowering behind the desk in the study. When I tried to help him out from beneath it, well, it was the first time I had ever feared for my life. That is not why you two are no longer close? And not at all, detective. We were always very different in nature. While I had always wanted to follow an academic path, Zakaria was more of a free spirit, or at least as free as our father and the laws would allow. And yet, he ended up in the military. Quite the contrast. Our father demanded that he at least try to do something with his life. And when some of his friends joined the army, he signed up with them. It wasn't long before he moved out from the family home after his return from the army. I always assumed that he had put the war and everything that came with it behind him and was moving on. But now I see that is far from the truth. Ah. 
Bonjour, madame. May I offer my condolences for your loss? Thank you, detective, but they are not necessary. What can I do for you? I was hoping you would be prepared to answer some questions. If I must. I'm sure you're aware he was not the easiest man to get along with. His hot temper made him a number of foes. A hot temper is reason enough to kill a man. His mouth often acted before his brain. Perhaps someone had grown tired of dealing with it. Seeing as I heard Mr. Becker's in what I would describe as an unnecessarily loud exchange of words yesterday, he would be my first suspect. You heard them yourself? How could I not? The volume they were shouting at, I could hear them from the study in my room. You did not think it fitting to tell me this yesterday? I didn't think Felix was going to wind up dead and a murderer loose in my house. My apologies, detective. I assume you are talking about the supposed blackmail letter. Oui, madame. You know of it? It arrived shortly after the first. Rather coincidental, if you ask me. I'm not sure I understand what you're trying to say, madame. He no doubt had secrets hidden away. But do you honestly think Felix had anything of value to his name worth threatening him for? Perhaps you should enlighten me. Well, he was here, living in my house, eating my food, prepared by my staff. Does that answer your question, detective? I wouldn't put it past him to have written it himself, in the hopes of getting some sympathy from me. And the other letters? He probably wrote those, too. If Angeline paid the first, that would have given him the money to pay the second letter. He is the White Knight, saves the day, and expects to live here happily ever after. What is it you wish to know? You two have been friends for some time now. 
And while I do not mean to pry, has your relationship only... If you are trying to insinuate that Mr. De Silva and I are running around like schoolchildren, you could not be further from the truth. He was friends with my husband, for goodness sake. Oui, I understand they worked together. Investments, if I am correct. Mr. De Silva was the voice of reason that my husband should have listened to more often, instead of throwing our money at businesses that were already on the verge of bankruptcy. Merci, madame. I shall not bother you any further. Bonjour, madame. You must be the wonderful cook. Wonderful and modest, sir. I am Rihanna. My taste buds thank you for the ravishing meal last night. It has been some time since I ate so well. Glad to hear it, sir. Uh, S'il te plaît, madame. A detective is fine. In that case, mademoiselle is fine for me, and I will ignore your presumption of marriage. Très bon, mademoiselle. That's right. I've seen staff come and go, but a house always needs a trustworthy cook. I agree, but if I was to eat what you prepare every day, I fear I may be the size of La Maison. Not a bad thing, detective. You could do with some meat on your bones. Well, with the snow still not clearing, we may be stuck here for the weekend. Perhaps I should look to adjust my pantalon buttons. I did. Monsieur Archie told me what had happened. Bruises can swell fast, so I took him some ice to bring it down. How was the Major when you saw him? Grumpy, as always. I suppose one would not take kindly to being punched as he was. Punched or not, he was as ungrateful as ever. I shall not keep you any longer. Merci, mademoiselle. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. Is there something I can help you with, detective? You have got the wrong end of the stick, detective. Maman has snapped at him recently, but it was nothing more than that. It was something to do with the letter. I heard them in the library before Maman shouted and he stormed out of the room past me. 
Could it have been the blackmail letter that instigated their argument? Why would Maman be upset with him over the letter? Madame is of a very different opinion from yourself regarding his connection with the letters. She believes him to be the author. That is what she told you? She has always been one to make a quick, if not rash, decision, but she cannot truly believe that. I don't recall telling him directly. I did not want Maman to find out it had been paid. If he knew, surely she would. Madame believes he may have been behind all the letters, and taking your payment of the first, then used it to pay the second and be the hero in you and your mother's eyes. I never knew Maman had such an imagination. Where would she get a story like that from? That is a question I was hoping you may be able to answer. You have met him? Do you really think he's capable of such a devious plan? It is a plan only the most crooked and underhanded could create. Is that the Major? I am not so sure. I shall not keep you any longer. Merci, mademoiselle. Things are beginning to become clearer. Is there something I can help you with, detective? I'm afraid it had been that way for some time. Maman is not forthcoming with her emotions, as I'm sure you are aware. But I could tell she had not been happy with their arrangement for the last few months. What gave you that impression? There was not one particular thing that she expressed. It was just the way she spoke to him and of him when he wasn't present. I shall not keep you any long. Whatever you need, detective. Certainly, detective.
I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Another success. I never doubted myself. Pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Magnifique. Detective Poirot, I have been asked to inform you that Lady Van den Bosch has returned to her room, and she wishes not to be disturbed. Merci. Madame certainly has mastered the art of subtlety. They may not be the exact words she used, but I am sure you can imagine. Excuse me, I have some further duties to attend to in the pantry. Hmm. 
Detective Poirot, what do you think you are doing in here? I have something I wish to discuss with you. Well, I hope it is important enough to justify barging into one's bedroom. I assure you it is. Good, because this has gone on far too long. We are snowed in this house while a murderer runs amok. I can understand your frustrations, but it is not as simple as... You were once an incompetent officer, and now it seems you are just as incompetent as a detective. If I was not being lied to and misled at every turn, perhaps the murderer would already be in custody. I hope you are not suggesting I had something to do with Felix's murder. I am suggesting that if I had the support that everyone claims they are offering, we would be in a very different situation. If you have something you want to ask, I suggest you ask me now. I'm sure he has hundreds of letters in there. Most of them could and should have been thrown away a long time ago. You are going to have to be more specific. I refer to the letter addressed to you. The one of a romantic nature. Romantic nature? Please, detective. Felix did not have a romantic bone in his body. He made his intentions quite clear in the letter. I must admit I myself was surprised. You really do have quite the active imagination, detective. If that is how you wish to interpret it, so be it. But I can assure you, the Major did not think of me that way, and certainly did not include it in a letter. We met before Angeline was born, so he was often at the house when she was growing up. And where was it you two met? I was attending an event. Felix was also in attendance as a serving officer. A conversation was struck. So it was not through the Viscount that you two met? I did not require my husband to start conversations on my behalf. It was you that instigated it then? Oh, my, my, detective. That active imagination of yours has taken you on quite some journey. Edwin spent much of his time away on business before Angeline was born. Felix was a welcome distraction from the loneliness of the house. You were alone in the house? The staff continued their duties, of course, but trying to get any sort of sophisticated or cultured conversation from them was like drawing blood from a stone. And when Angeline was born? Edwin remained at home. It was his duty as a father. And the Major? He had his own business and life to tend to, but we remained in touch via letter. Around the time of Edwin's passing, Felix had relocated to the area. I think that is all for now. Merci, madame.
Aha. Oh. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. Detective Poirot, are you any closer to uncovering the truth of Felix's involvement with the letters? I am, mademoiselle. I can confirm that he was not the author of the blackmail letters. So the author is still out there? Oui, but it will not be long before they are apprehended, and the only letters they shall be penning will be from behind iron bars. Your confidence is rather assuring. Thank you, detective. I'm sorry, detective. I did not intend to leave your mind so full of thoughts. No apology is required. It actually made me question my whole chain of thinking. What if there had been a collusion between them, and the Major's murder was planned, organized and orchestrated to make the investigation seem almost impossible? Oh my, detective. That is quite a theory. Every guest has a motive. You confirmed that with the mention of Mademoiselle Conrad and the Major's fight. Supplying one another with a rock-solid alibi would surely throw off any detective. But not you. Correct, Mademoiselle. It would take much more to stamp Detective Poirot. I haven't seen that book in so long. Yes, it was a gift for my 10th birthday. I have read it from cover to cover countless times. He left such a lovely inscription too. It sounds as though there is a side to the Major I did not get to see. Was it common for him to bring you gifts? Not common, but if he had been away for some time, he would bring me a small memento from his travels. He hasn't done that in some time though. They were. I'm afraid they may have gathered some dust being in the storage room for so long. I kept them in hope of giving them to my child when the time comes. It sounds as though he had always cared about you. His presence at the house was comforting for us both after father died, even if sometimes he was a little too overprotective. That's right, ever since I can remember, Felix has been around. It seems as though she has a number of support networks. The Major, her friendship with the Countess, not forgetting Monsieur Da Silva. 
Maman has many friends. I know how she may seem to most, but once you break the hard shell... There is a further shell waiting to be broken. Oh, <laughs> very good, detective. Forgive me, mademoiselle. I only jest. It's quite all right. You are not the only one that feels a razor tongue. She's grateful you are here, especially now, whether she shows it or not. They have often come to blows when it concerns Maman. They are both trying to protect her, but they themselves cannot seem to get along. She spoke of his desire to join the, uh, how do you describe it, social elite. Hmm. This isn't the first time she has vocalized that concern. She thinks the Major was just using our family name to make his way to the top. And you do not agree? I will not deny he has shown interest in Maman's social circles, but they have been friends since even before I was born. Surely all those years of friendship was not just to raise his social standing. How do you mean, detective? I imagine a house of this size is rather costly, keeping it in the immaculate condition it is in. Maman looks after the financial side of the house, but I think she has had to ask him more than once for a contribution of sorts. It is not for me to get involved. I shall not keep you any longer. Merci, mademoiselle. What a revelation! Is this really necessary? He may have stayed in my home, but Felix was a grown man, detective. What he kept, hidden or otherwise, has nothing to do with me. But it does not surprise you that he had such a photograph? We have been friends and he has been there for Angeline for many years, but you find it strange that he keeps a reminder of us? Perhaps that says more about you, detective. What I do find strange is that if he did hold a flame for you, why he would never express it? If he did, it was not reciprocated. I have not even considered another since my husband's passing. Not that it is any of your business. I think that is all for now. Merci, madame. Another success. I never doubted myself. Is this really necessary? Who I allow in my house is none of your business. I do not have to explain anything to you. I did not think you were one for charity. I would not expect you to think much of anything. There is no need to talk on it any further, but I'm sure you will remember that, financially speaking, we have had our issues. He was a man that required no protection, detective. 
especially from me. That is the impression I had of him, which is why your defensive stance warrants questioning. Your insistent questioning on such trivial matters are getting on my last nerve. There is a murderer and a blackmailer to be found. That is your job here. How many times do I have to tell you? There was no romantic feelings between us. I have grown weary of this conversation, Poirot. There is nothing more to say. Madame, you continue to withhold the truth. And you continue to get on my last nerve. I am not obliged to tell you every detail of my private life. But when it impedes my investigation... If only you were this focused on finding the blackmailer and... Madame. Very well. I did not lie about how we met. I was attending an event, raising money for... Oh, I cannot recall now. It had been some time since I had returned home and was rather missing English soil. I was aware of Felix's invitation, or at least that, that there was to be several British officers attending the party. And that is where our friendship began. He was a warm reminder of home, and I enjoyed conversing with him. We shared walks in the park and read together. As I said, he was a welcome distraction from the days spent alone. I shall go no further with the details, but I will say, I had no intention on being unfaithful to my husband. It was never our plan to go that far. Once I found out I was pregnant, I knew it had to stop. The Viscount never questioned Mademoiselle's birth? In his mind, he had no reason to, and he shouldn't have had to. It was my mistake to bear. If he knew the truth, our lives would have been ruined. I told Felix that he was to stay away, but he had no intention to. He became an uncle figure to Angeline, and they grew closer after Edwin's death. I could not tell her the truth. Too much time had passed. The secret remained only between him and I. Until now. And what were the Major's thoughts on revealing the truth? He wanted to tell her everything. He wanted her to know exactly who he was. But I told him no. It would not have been the poignant reconciliation that he expected. She would not understand. It must be. But I have told no one. And the Major? Felix promised me he wouldn't tell a soul, and I believed him. What well, even if he wanted to? You did not think anyone knew, and that is why you disregarded the letter. If you bow to these criminals, they will only try to claw more from you. I tried to retrieve them from the safe after everyone had retired last night. But when I opened the safe, they were nowhere to be found. I assumed he must have hidden them somewhere else. When I entered the study this morning, they were as visible as a red notice on a police station wall. I would appreciate if you did not compare them to the face of a wanted felon. Pardon, madame. But that does mean someone else in the house has seen them. I, I don't understand. Why would they return them? A mystery that is still yet to be solved. I think that is all for now. Merci, madame.
Detective Poirot, how is your investigation coming? Monsieur Sterling, I must admit, I have learned much more than I was expecting to. You'll be wrapping the case up soon, then. One has never finished learning, monsieur. And in this case, I shall need to continue if I am to find the Major's killer. It might help to vocalize your thinking. I'm all ears. Monsieur, would you gather the guests and staff in the salon? Right away, Detective. Can I ask for what reason? I shall reveal all once everyone is together. Detective, what is the meaning of all this? Madame, I ask that you all lend me your ears for only a few moments. What I have to say is of great significance to everyone. You are all invited here to celebrate the engagement of Mademoiselle Angeline Van den Bosch and Monsieur Gédéon Demir, the coming together of two prevalent families. But the celebrations were short-lived, as Major Felix Egan was found dead in his study by a young servant of the house. It then became my responsibility and obligation as a detective to uncover the truth behind his demise. My initial examination of his study exposed a number of things I did not expect to find, things I have no desire to divulge at this time, but what I can say is this. It was no simple murder. A letter demanding ransom for a continued silence confirmed this. I am sure some, if not all of you, have heard whispers of a series of blackmails that have plagued the social elite in recent weeks. After hearing of the letters in the major study, you may ask if it was him behind the letters. You may further ask if he was preparing his next threat to another unsuspecting victim. It is a question that crossed even my mind. That was until I sought the truth. That in fact it was the Major that had fallen victim to our blackmailer Mysterieux. Last night I spoke with you all, confirmed your whereabouts in the house over the course of the evening, and while I would have expected such questioning to reveal a potential suspect, what I learned was that it could not have been one of you. What do you mean, not one of us? The man was stabbed. He hardly did that to himself. There is still a killer in the house. Pardon, monsieur, if you would allow me to finish. It could not have been only one of you. Rather, a partneria, a partnership, in cahoots, if you will. Conversations today have revealed facts that I was not expecting to discover. And although they may have muddied and complicated my investigation, what I must do to bring the guilty parties to justice has become clearer. Those of you that spun stories in an attempt to confuse and derail my investigation have made a grave mistake in underestimating my intelligence. Other detectives may fall for such deception, but I can assure you, Detective Poirot is no such fool. My investigation is far from over. 
and swift justice shall be dealt to those that have committed such appalling acts and have continued to mislead and lie to protect themselves. Now, I must continue, mon enquête, and I shall leave you to consider that you may be beside a cold-hearted killer. Bonsoir. Monsieur Sterling, un moment. Quite the speech, detective. Merci, but it was not made to entertain, more to warn the guilty parties that I am hot on their heels, no matter how clever they believe themselves to be. Well, if there is anything I can do. Nothing. But I was so preoccupied with the Major. Sorry, Detective. Should I have? Perhaps it was just my mind playing games again. Maybe one of the guests got lost and wandered in. Master Hagen had a key, obviously, and Lady Vandenbosch. When requested, aye, if something is required from there when Master Hagen is not around. Forgive me, if he is not around, how is it you access this safe? It's not what you think, detective. What I think is that you have been trusted with a copy of the key, and you have lied to me about it. I only lied because of the trouble I can get into with Lady Vandenbosch. At this moment, monsieur, you should be more worried about the trouble you shall find yourself in with the law. I know how it will sound, but I lost my key. I must have set it down somewhere, and it has been tidied away. Master Hagen asked so rarely for me to go in the safe, I didn't think it would be missed. I should have said this morning, I'm sorry. Monsieur, I am not quite sure you understand the severity of what has happened. I am well aware, detective. I just thought she would be able to help. Would you allow a man with a smoking gun to remove his bullet from a victim's chest? I suppose not. Is that really necessary? The murderer remains at large, and there is still no sign of the weapon. I would say that makes them essential. Of course. I still just cannot imagine any of them being guilty of his murder. It may be hard to imagine, but it is the truth. I would like to begin my searches now. Since it is closest, I will start with the West Wing. I may not be back when you return. Here is the key to the other rooms. Please return it when you're done. Merci. I shall guard it with my life. Entrez. Detective, what a pleasure. I did not expect to see you in my chambers. In a purely professional capacity, I can assure you. There is no need to act so stiff, Detective. Madame, after the revelation of your actions last night, I'm afraid my sense of humor is all but gone. I will not apologize again for merely trying to help. Shall we get straight to it then? Let us not waste your time any further, Detective. That would be Inga. She has been one of the most promising young women that has come from the shelter. 
Madame Vandenbosch took in a young lady from your shelter. There is no need to sound so surprised, detective. She does have a heart. I did not mean to sound so cruel. I just did not expect Madame to hire someone of that background after the incident with her previous maid, Florette. People change, detective. You should not judge someone on their past actions. Believe me, Countess. I know that only too well. Be careful, detective. That almost sounded like a compliment. It is your actions in this house that have been questionable, madame. Your work outside is something that many more could take note of. We do what we can. We wouldn't be doing a very good job if I could only help one girl. I in fact found work for one of them as a maid in Monsieur Da Silva's house recently. She has fitted into Monsieur's home well. What is better, detective? That she remained in an abusive house? Or she is able to rebuild her life with an honest wage in a prosperous house? When put like that, is she happy in her position? The happiest she has been in years. I check in with them all as often as possible. And if there was a problem, I would know. Merci, madame. Go ahead, detective. A compliment, and now an apology. Well, detective, you certainly have changed your tune. There was something I was still unsure of. You mentioned that your training was some years ago. From my days as a nurse, oui. If that is so, why would you have brought several pieces of equipment usually found in a physician's bag? One must always be prepared, detective. Prepared? At an engagement celebration? If I had not brought them, I would not have been able to assist you last night. Perhaps you should be thankful for my precaution and not so suspicious. Merci, madame. Detective, what can I do for you? Mademoiselle, I am sure you understand my reasoning for such intrusion. If it's going to clear my name, be my guest. If you wouldn't mind answering some questions, it can hopefully be cleared faster. Like I said, he's not the man he wants everyone to think he is. Oui, but how is it you came to that conclusion? You don't really want me to recount every conversation I've had with him, do you? There is one particular I had in mind. An argument would imply it was a two-way conversation. And that is not how it was? Here it is. I've been helping Angeline get exposure, her marriage to Gideon is big news, and his work is really paving the way for others. 
I saw the chance to get their names out there, and he didn't like it. What was there not to like? Your guess is as good as mine, Detective. But if I had to, I'd say he was jealous it wasn't his name at the top of the article. And his reason to storm off? Oh, you know about that. Let's just say I didn't accept his pathetic attempt to get me to stop the story. If you're gonna try and pay someone off, at least make it worth their while. <laughs> You've really got a fascination with that guy, huh? I would not say fascination. An interest, perhaps. Well, I'll save you the bother of trying to find out more about him. He's not that interesting. In fact, he's a bit of a wimp if you ask me. That is not the impression I got of him. That's because you've only seen the side of him he wants you to. He knows what to say in front of the right people. But behind closed doors, he's clueless. Let me guess. The first thing he told you was that he was a union leader. No, the voice of the people. A man that is proud of his work is not something to be sneered at. Don't get me wrong, he has a way with words, and he can certainly rally a crowd, but that's about it. At the end of the day, he's a representative and nothing more. He's got to play the part, not just learn the lines. Merci, mademoiselle. I shall leave you to relax. Sure thing, detective. And if you change your mind on that exclusive about that shooting... If I do change it, you shall be the first to know. Huh. Go right ahead, Detective. All Felix cared about was money and filling his pockets with it. That's why he got into bed with De Silver. The Major was not in need of money, though. Need and want are two very different things. Did he need to move here and leech off the Madame? No, but he wanted to. As far as I know, De Silver hired him to work security. He was worried what could happen to his precious factories if things got ugly. And your reporters were there to cover the story when it did turn that way. My reporters go where there is news to be told. And you predicted the violence that occurred? Anyone could see that was gonna happen. If you ask me, Hugo should have acted sooner. Merci, mademoiselle. I shall leave you to relax. Huh. 
Mademoiselle, we meet again. Bonjour, Monsieur Poirot. Pardon, Détective Poirot. Just a detective is quite all right. Bon, can I help you with something? I was taking him a plate of food, but he didn't answer to my knocking. You then entered the study. I did. He wasn't moving. He just lay there. I did not mean to upset you again. Seeing him there would be troubling for anyone, and I'm sure it is not a memory you wish to relive. I suppose we're like a family. We argue, but most of the time we get along. You must all be quite close, then. Some more than others. You refer to whom, mademoiselle? Well, Maman Ré, sorry, Rihanna. She's been here the longest, and she's very close with Lizzie on account of Luke. Maman Ré is Luke's sister. You did not know that. I thought she would have said. She talks about him all the time. It must have been awful, losing him in those riots. Apparently, he was right at the front when they were charged. They didn't stand a chance. If I had been the one responsible for his death, I wouldn't want Maman Ré looking for me. Mademoiselle Rayana, uh, Maman Ré, uh, she has expressed her desire for revenge. Every time she talks about what happened. I guess you wouldn't know anything about life on the streets. It is not an experience I have had to face personally. But I understand that many are forced into it, and the lifestyle that comes with it. The lifestyle of a thief, you mean? Put rather bluntly, oui. 
You are the first officer that has not taken one look at me and pulled out their handcuffs. Mademoiselle, I can see you have turned your life around, and I commend you on your efforts. Without the Countess, I would probably be rotting in a cell somewhere. Merci, mademoiselle. Monsieur Demir, I hope you are feeling better today. Nothing a good night's sleep couldn't fix. Très bien. I wonder if you would be up to discussing certain matters with me. Whatever you need. I lost my taste for death a long time ago. But it had to be done. I'm certainly in no rush to be carrying a dead body again, though. Most understandable. I shall extend the same gratitude to you as I did to your brother. You've spoken to him already. How is he? Perhaps that should be a question you ask him yourself. Yeah, maybe. Those two, close. They must share something in common to be able to hold the conversation for the time they did. If there is one thing I know about my brother, it's that he will not. Uh, no. He cannot be rude. He just doesn't have it in him. Was it not your brother that punched Monsieur Hagen? Ah, that's different. He was asking for it. If you put my brother in a room with five socialites like her, he would work his way around every single one of them, offering his full attention and finest manners. I bet he had a lot to say. He always did have an opinion on the war. When I say your past, I refer to your past as brothers. Oh. Okay, well, what did he say? It seems you both had the same sentiment for this party. Perhaps the bridges that you thought were once burnt are in fact primed to be reconstructed. We'll see how probable that reconstruction is going to be. Until he sees my point of view, I don't know how we can move forward. What is there for him to understand before the bond can be repaired? He lost his friends in the war, the same as everyone. But somehow he has forgiven. I'm sorry, Detective, I can't. And Gideon just doesn't understand that. Always got time for my favorite detective. 
the dagger. I wondered how long it would take for that to become an issue. I shall give you the opportunity to explain the reason for it being here before I jump to any conclusions. It was going to be a wedding gift for Gideon. I've maybe not been the best brother in recent years. I thought this could make up for some of it. After what happened to the Major, I thought it was a bit tasteless. You did not see it fitting to tell me you were harboring a rather sizable knife in your room? I wouldn't say harboring. And I wasn't expecting to be a suspect in a murder. Merci for your assistance, monsieur. What a revelation! Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Monsieur de Silva, I am sure you understand the necessity for this type of search. Not really, detective. Your speech was rather spirited. But it did not give me much faith in your investigation. I have not had my abilities questioned to my face by one of those I suspect of a crime before. Well, if you wish to prove me wrong, you should hurry up and find Felix's killer. And I hope, with your help, monsieur, I shall. Yes, I helped him invest some money. 
Unfortunately, he was not the businessman he thought he was. Madame Vandenbosch had a very similar view. At least he could have taken solace that you were both in the same position. I think you're confused, detective. It was Edwin that lost his fortune, not I. Forgive my naivete. If you were helping him make viable investments, would you not have seen the same opportunity for yourself? I told him about the opportunities. I did not tell him to put his whole family's wealth into it. The prospect of doing good meant more to him than his profit margins. He was bound to fail. The business declared bankruptcy. It did, until it was purchased for a fraction of its worth and made the new owner a small fortune. Everything that I want to say on that matter has already been said. I understand, monsieur. But what I would like to know is, was the late Viscount aware of your feelings towards his wife? Excuse me, detective, but you have crossed the line. Crossed the line like an attempt to bankrupt a business partner and friend so that you be able to swoop in and impress a certain target of your affections. You make such ridiculous accusations without a shred of proof. Your reaction at the mere suggestion is proof enough, monsieur. While I cannot arrest you for betrayal of a friend, I can hope your conscience does not forget, and that will be punishment enough. He didn't have much to speak of. I was always surprised at the life he lived. Surprised in what way? Well, considering it wasn't that long ago he came to me asking about work, I didn't think he was in such good financial shape. You offered him a position? Nothing that he was willing to lower himself to. That's when he began talking about what else he could do for me. If you can call what him and his team did security. For the money I paid, I did not expect them to be so reckless. It was a considerable amount you paid him? There's no need to divulge amounts, but it was certainly more than was expected. He said they were all professionals. But I saw nothing of the sort. He said he had worked with them all in the army as their superior officer. They were men that could be trusted. But that was not the case? I had not even met them before they arrived on site. They brought their own equipment. They looked like they knew what they were doing. And this equipment? It included the weapons that injured and killed the workers? It was not much of a choice, detective. I said they didn't need them, but Felix said it was essential. He said he knew better. That is all for now. Oh. Ah. Aha.
What is it now, detective? Excuse me? Detective, I think you are beginning to lose your mind. I do not think it is unreasonable to question why you would feel the need to bring a letter opener with you. Really, detective? If I had stabbed a man with it, do you really think I would have left it lying out in my room? Yes, and no one asked him to. But surely it is beneficial to both parties. Your profits must have been affected. There are barely any profits to speak of. Why have those talks not taken place and the deal arranged? Monsieur Beckers has made no attempt to speak with me and offered no counter-offer. The ball is in his court, detective. I have spoken of a potential blackmail ring, and yet you still kept your letter to yourself. It is none of your business, and it is nothing more than a cheap trick to have me admit something that is not true. If that were the case, it would be strange for you to have kept the letter and brought it with you, would it not? Your persistence is a trait I do not enjoy. No reason, detective. Merely saving you from wasting your time. I will be the judge of that. I would like to know about any and all evidence that may help my investigation. I trust there is nothing else you deem a waste of my time. Of course not, officer. It's not as though you think I'm harboring some illicit secret. The letter was a pathetic attempt to intimidate me. Nothing more. I have never heard so much rubbish in all my life. I value those that work hard and deserve it. That suggests there are some that you do not respect. Yes, well, why should I praise someone for doing a poor job? You make me sound like some monster. Monsieur, the letter does not only discuss your questionable business dealings, but also cases of abuse against your staff, both accusations that must be taken very seriously. Detective, there is a difference between telling a member of my staff what to do and abuse. And it is you that decides where that line is drawn? In my house? Yes, it is. Please stop calling it that. I treat all my servants exactly how I always have, and no one has complained before. That does not mean your behavior is appropriate. They have one chance. If they are not doing the job they are hired to do, they are gone. You would be surprised how many staff expect an easy ride. Is there a specific member of staff that may have expected such a ride? There is one girl, a new maid. I didn't expect great things from her, but Comtesse de Vos promised me she could do what was required. That is all for now. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Magnifique!
Another success. I never doubted myself. What is it now, detective? She approached me. I thought it was rather brash. In what way? Assuming that I would want to take on another servant, and one from such a troubled background, she is running the charity, not I. When he came to me, I told him that with the factories on strike and my profits pouring down the drain, I had nothing for him. But he said he could help me get them all back to work and the factories earning. His rates were steep, but he said he knew what needed to be done, and he was prepared to do it. A week passed and they were all still on strike. In fact, even more had joined them. He made excuse after excuse, demanding more and more money for the job to be done. But he never actually told me what he was going to do. The riots. I had no idea they were going to charge them like that. How was I meant to know? And even following such a tragedy, he continued to demand money from you. He said if he wanted my silence, it would cost. Do you have any idea what it could do to my livelihood, my name? If it got out that I had paid the so-called security that did that? I have every idea, monsieur. You hired a militia to take action against your own workers. You deserve whatever name is chosen for being so morally bereft in your decision-making. I didn't know that was what he was going to do. You must believe me. I have to believe nothing but the truth. And the truth, monsieur, is that it is not only the Major that has the blood of those men on his hands. That is all for now. Things are beginning to become clearer. Is there something you need, detective? She helped me at the shelter, and with this job. That I am already aware of. What I am not is what else she tasked you with. Pardon, detective? I know that your position as a servant in this house is not your only job. What did Countess de Vos ask you to do while in this house? She said I had to do what she asked, or I would be back on the street. I didn't want to do it. If anyone found out, I would be the prime suspect. Merci, mademoiselle. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Oh, 
What a revelation! Is there something you need, Detective? Nothing. She said I was to take nothing. If it was not something she wished you to take, what was it? She wanted me to find out information about the family and Monsieur Hagen. Why did she request that? At first I didn't know, but when I heard about Mademoiselle Angeline being blackmailed, and then the Major, I knew she had used what I found. I knew Monsieur Archie had a key, and it would be easy to get it from him. You knew that the Major asked Monsieur Sterling to access the safe from time to time, and if anything was ever discovered missing, he would surely take the blame. I never took anything. I only told the Comtesse what I had found. And that was? About Monsieur Hagen and the Madame's relationship, and Angeline. I'm sure the Comtesse was pleased to hear such valuable information. She said I had done a good job, but I needed proof. That's why I went back and got the letters last night. I fetched the letters again and took them to the Comtesse last night. But she shouted at me and said what a stupid girl I was. You were only doing as she requested. She said it was too dangerous for her to have them with you around. That's when I returned them to the study. I thought I heard someone on the stairs, so I just threw them back. It was dark as I dared not turn the light on. Someone would have seen it. Merci, mademoiselle. Magnifique. Things are beginning to become clearer. something you need, detective. That's all, I swear. I heard Monsieur Archie and Monsieur Félix talking about a storeroom, but I haven't found it. Is the Comtesse aware of this room? I told her it was somewhere in the house, but I didn't know where. She wasn't happy with me that I hadn't found it yet. Merci, mademoiselle. Your honesty today has helped me greatly. I suppose that I will lose my position at the house now. That is not my decision to make. But when the whole truth is revealed, it will not be the pawns the law looks to convict. We shall be coming for the queen. Another success. I never doubted myself.
Mademoiselle, merci for coming. Have you had a breakthrough, Detective? I have. Finally, I have the news you have awaited. Please, Detective, don't hold me in suspense. Oh my, I feel faint at the thoughts of knowing who could have done this to us. It is said to keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. It is Countess de Vos that is behind the letters. I don't believe it. What about the Major's letter? Not only his, but a letter to Monsieur da Silva. She was blackmailing him as well. Detective, I just... I just don't know what to say. Take a moment, mademoiselle. It is a lot of information to take in. I just don't understand why she would do such a cruel thing. She has never been particularly forthcoming with it. Only that she was homeless for some time, and that she was at the woman's shelter before here. And it is there that the Countess abused her power and manipulated her to uncover secrets of the family. All this time she has been working for Margot, doing her dirty work? I am afraid so, mademoiselle. Is Maman aware? You are the first I have told, mademoiselle. Next will be the authorities. I'm afraid that we'll have to wait. And we will. I want to see her punished to the fullest extent of the law. But we cannot telephone anyone, as the lines are still down. Monsieur Archibald informed me earlier I had hoped they would be working again. Last night's snow must have caused more damage than expected. Last night? They have been done all weekend, Detective. Detective? Are you okay? Detective Poirot? Would you like me to fetch you a glass of water, Detective? My apologies, Mademoiselle. I was taken by surprise for a moment, but I have regained my composure. A glass of water is not required. Would you excuse me? Merci, Mademoiselle. Mademoiselle, what a pleasure to see you. Detective, I... It is a rather late hour to be wandering the halls. Oh, yes. Of course. I do not feel myself, Detective. If that is the case, you should be resting. Allow me to help. No, no, that's quite all right. I will see to my duties and return to bed. Lizzie! Excuse me, Elizabeth. Lady Van Den Bosch has been waiting for some time now. Oh, yes. Sorry. Detective Poirot was just... I'll see to the detective. You just head on up. Off you go. Good night, detective. 
Bonne nuit, mademoiselle. I'm sorry about her, Detective. As you can see, she is still not back to her usual bubbly self. This weekend seems to have taken quite a toll on her. She'll be right as rain in a couple of days. Now, what can I help you with? As if by magic you appeared when needed. I would like to speak with you and the remaining staff, if you could gather them in the staff pantry. At this hour, Detective? Is that really necessary? I shall be the one that determines what is and what is not necessary, and this is very much the former. As you wish, Detective. I'll see if Inge is finished preparing for breakfast. And Mademoiselle Rihanna? Yes, of course. I'll fetch her from the kitchen. Elizabeth may be some time with the lady of the house. Perhaps you'd like to start with us? Very well. I shall speak with Mademoiselle Elizabeth when her duties are complete. While I am gathering the staff, Mr. Beckers is in the library. If you wish to join him, I could bring you both a nightcap. I wish to keep a clear head, but there is something I wish to discuss with Monsieur Beckers. Monsieur Beckhouse, it is rather late. The other guests have already retired to their rooms. I didn't even see the time. It's easy to lose oneself in a library this impressive. That is something we can agree on, monsieur. I suppose I should be heading? Un moment, monsieur. There are some matters that we must discuss. Oh, what is it, detective? I'm not sure what you mean. A proposal to make you somewhat of a star, a figurehead for the working man. What would you call that? There was certainly no talk of making me a star. That is not the type of man I am. She wanted to write a piece on my work with the Union. And I was happy to oblige. My speech? I'm not sure what speech. You may save your false ramblings for your next audience. I am aware you spoke with the Major yesterday. Whoever told you that has it wrong, Detective. Please, Monsieur. The truth. Okay, fine. Yes, the Major and I spoke, but it was not for long. I was trying to convince him to speak with Ernesto. It's time we brought the strikes to an end. And that was best approached by a shouting match? He wouldn't listen to a word I said. I spent so long preparing how I was going to convince him, but men like him are only swayed by one thing. Money. It is said that money is the root of all evil, but it can also be a rather powerful bargaining chip. Well, he was bargaining with people's lives. If he had acted sooner, none of those men, my men, would have to die. A deal? It was an insult! And that is why you did not sign it? I didn't sign it because the workers deserve so much more. Not his pathetic attempts to get them back to work. And did you think there was a chance for a better deal to be made? I know there was. He's a pompous swine that cares for only himself and filling his pockets. Mademoiselle Conrad can be quite convincing, can she not? She has certainly taken several wealthy business partners by surprise with her knowledge and prowess. She knows how to use her womanly powers to get what she wants. But she did not surprise or use you? Me? Used me? 
Don't be ridiculous, detective. There were no games played at my expense. Perhaps some, but I'm not so easily manipulated or simple-minded. And I stand by that. It was an insult. A rather bold move to make such a decision on your own. <laughs> I may not be perfect, but I've done everything I can. Your efforts fell short in every respect. You claim to be the voice of the people, but you care about no one's voice or benefits but your own. It's not as easy as just signing a piece of paper, detective. It is a heavy weight to bear on one's shoulders. I consulted with others. You yourself spoke of Mademoiselle Conrad's cunning in business. And I told you, I was not one of her targets. Tell me then, what was it she reminded you of? The acclaimed man of the people you would be known as if you pushed the factory owners for more? It wasn't like that at all. From where I am standing, it was she that was manipulating the terms of the deal, and you in the process. You were merely her pawn. Okay, yes, I know. I shouldn't have listened to her. But what else could I do? Remain an unknown my whole life? I didn't mean for anyone to get hurt. It may not have been your intention, but we both know the result. You rolled the dice with those men's lives for fame, and you lost. What does that have to do with anything? I have often wondered about the competition siblings face in a large family. When you're young, it is the best feeling to know you have family that will stand by you, without even being asked. It is not until everyone starts carving their own path that you realize you're walking your solo, and those that were beside you are now miles away. My other brothers were the athletes of the family. They both played soccer, and were the infatuation of every teenage girl. I'm sure you have seen the type. Oui, monsieur, but I can assure you that was not I. Then there was me. Quiet, timid, a shadow of the Baker brothers. My voice and very presence was forgotten and ignored. Nothing I could say or do would ever reach the bar they had set. But I always knew I was destined for great things. Years passed and now that I no longer stood in the colossal ombre of my brothers, I could become my own man. When the position of union leader was posted, it was my chance to finally be heard. You hear politicians speak of the little or the common men? Well, that was me. And I knew what we wanted and what we needed. When I spoke, others listened. I held their gaze with a sense of pride, a sense that what I was doing was for the greater good. It was supposed to be my crowning achievement, lead the men to victory over the money-grabbing oppressors. But instead, all I did was lead them to their deaths. Monsieur, it was not at your hands that these men died. The blame cannot lie solely on your shoulders. Those responsible will be punished for their crimes. That you must trust.
Detective, what can we do for you? You can help me by telling the truth, and in the process, help yourselves. Sorry, Detective. It's a bit late in the night for riddles. It is no riddle, Monsieur. If I do not receive the truth, you shall all be charged as accessories to murder. Detective, I think maybe you have been locked in this house for too long. We have already... You have told me a version, and now I require honesty. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Monsieur Sterling, is there anything you would like to add to your story? I'm not sure what you think I have done, Detective. Let us not string out this charade any longer. From his associate? I've already told you, Detective. I don't know who it was. Do not worry yourself on such details now. I suppose they were lucky to have called when they did. Otherwise, they may not have gotten through at all, with the telephone lines being down as of yesterday. Aye, Detective. Lucky, I guess. Whiskey? You took a bottle of whiskey to the Major. You spoke with Monsieur Demir en route. Aye, of course. It was a bottle he picked up from his last visit to Scotland. Rather smoky number from the Highlands. He was saving it for a worthy occasion. Drowning his sorrows must have been fitting enough. Or was it the one from the West Coast? You'll have to excuse my memory, Detective. It's not what it used to be. Oh, you found it. Thank you, Detective. I've been looking everywhere for it. If I had lost a war medal, I would not stop until I found it. It's not what you think. I was... Exploiting a dead man's military achievements for your own personal gain? Nothing of the sort. He asked me to clean them up. I must have dropped it into my pocket when I was putting them back. 
an honest mistake. I wouldn't know. Probably. Your father was in the military for many years. That is what you told me. He was. And your family still keep his medals? They were sold. And why was that, monsieur? Is my family on trial now, detective? Only you, monsieur. And I repeat my question. Because we needed money. Voila. No. He keeps them safe with some of his old military documentation. Is that a typical job for the head butler? He trusts me to do a good job. I told him I used to clean my father's, so he asked me to do the same. And where does he keep these items? In the storage room. I know where everything is, so it's just easier if I fetch them for him as and when he needs them. It's certainly better than my last. You are paid a fitting wage for the work that is asked of you? I'm sure the lady of the house would not want me discussing it. But I... I should not complain. That is not the most convincing answer, monsieur. Between you and I, we all work very hard here. And it would be nice if we were rewarded for it. Please don't go anywhere. If I require more information, I shall call on you again. Mademoiselle, I shall keep my questions brief. I don't know what else I can tell you. You have been honest with me so far. All I request is that you continue to do so. Oui, detective. It was frantic in the pantry. We were working hard to make sure everything was up to scratch. Go on. Then Liz burst in, asking for Maman Ray's help. Her help with what, exactly? I don't know. She took Liz to one side, and I was needed in the salon. We spoke just after that in the pantry. You did not question what she needed help with? I was too busy. I love Liz, but she sheds a tear at almost everything these days. Although... I have never seen her look so pale. Merci. I shall return if I have any further questions. Mademoiselle, I shall be as quick and precise with my questioning as possible. Okay. What do you need? Merci. He was a good man. Taken too early. Forgive me, mademoiselle, for not extending them earlier, but I was not aware of your relationship. He was my only brother. And he died doing what he believed was right. If I ever get my hands on who took him from me... You say the riots, but it was the strike he was part of. They started the riots, not the workers. By they, you are referring to the security forces. They were brought in to keep the peace. Security, huh? They were brought in to make an example of them. It was all peaceful until they arrived. Why would they need to make an example? So that the workers would stop rallying. No one is going to go on strike if they think they'll get killed. The security you talk of were armed and ready. The workers were pigs to the slaughter. What chance did they have? Yes. This was before or after Archibald took him a bottle of whiskey. 
before. You are sure? It may have been after. The whiskey is kept in the cellar with all the alcohol. It is. Then you must have noticed him going into the cellar and returning with a bottle through the pantry, no? Yes, I suppose I did. It must have been before then. What is there to say? Being locked away in the pantry, I don't see her for most of the day. That may be, but she came looking for your help before dinner was served, did she not? She wasn't feeling well, that's all. And she came to you? I told you, we are a family here. The girls come to Mama Reh if they have a problem, and I fix it. When I saw her earlier, I must admit she was not looking herself. Perhaps I should check on her. No! Just leave the poor girl. She'll be fine after another bowl of my homemade soup. She just needs her rest. Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. Magnifique. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. What a revelation! Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. Things are beginning to become clearer. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together.
Another success. I never doubted myself. Another success. I never doubted myself. What a revelation! The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Sense. What a revelation! Things are beginning to become clearer. Another success. I never doubted myself. Magnifique.
Mr. Stowling. Oh, Detective, I was just... Please, I eagerly await to hear what reason you give for being in the storage room at this hour. A butler's job is never... I am no fool, Monsieur. You have spun enough stories this weekend. Honestly, Detective, you don't trust anyone. And with good reason. I've been thinking about my time with the family. I often think on fond memories, but it does not take me to a storage room in the middle of the night. There are many memories held within these walls. I just wanted to see them again. I didn't realize the noise I was making. Obviously. Were you preoccupied looking for another of the Major's medals? Of course not. I already explained. No, monsieur. You attempted to dupe me again into believing one of your stories. Please, detective. I know you know how it ended up in my possession. I was just trying to get some extra money together to send home. I can't lose this job. If Lady Van den Bosch found out... Theft of a medal would be the very least of your problems. Deceive? I'm sorry that I lied to you about the medal. Would you care to explain the fake telephone call? It was purely for my benefit, no? Why would I fake a telephone call? The same reason that Mademoiselle Rayana dressed in the Major's jacket in the snow. To allow not only the guests, but me, to believe the Major was still alive. I didn't kill him, Detective. I know, Monsieur. But I also know that you helped the one that did to cover their tracks. It wasn't like that. We were just trying to help. She had no part in it. You never let on. How long have you known it was her? Monsieur, I am Detective Hercule Poirot. I only show my hand when I deem it necessary. You will be taking her away, then. She will stand trial for what she has done. But you don't know the full story. She is just a servant in this house. If she is arrested, that will be the end for her. If Mademoiselle was only protecting herself, as you both have claimed, she will surely be found innocent. The Major's military storage box? The one that stored his medals? Amongst other things, yes. And those other things are? I had to protect her. If you found it when searching the study, you would have carted her off then and there. Whatever it is you have hidden, it will not remain that way for much longer. I need a moment. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. What a revelation!
I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Magnifique. There is no use lying anymore. He always had his regiment lighter that he received in the war on his person. And yet, it was not his regiment emblem that was engraved on it. My father's. It must have fallen out of my pocket. You still have it, detective. Monsieur. You have stashed evidence, manipulated a crime scene, obscured my investigation, and yet it is a lighter that you worry about most? If it is my path to end up behind bars for what I have done, so be it. It is Elizabeth that you cannot allow to be locked up without the truth being told. I have heard how you fought for that young maid before. Florette, is it? I only ask that you do the same for Elizabeth. You found it. Even the secret area that has been created here is not concealed enough to stop Detective Hercule Poirot. I couldn't just leave it at the scene for you to find. The Major was killed by his own knife. The knife that protected his life during the war 
would eventually be the one that ended it. It was in his holster when he attacked her. He had hold of her arm. What else was she meant to use to get him off of her? She didn't plan any of it, Detective. She was only defending herself. That is what Mademoiselle told you? She did, and I believe her. You think you knew the Major, but you had no idea. He was a monster and had more secrets than all of us combined. That may be true, but that does not excuse what she has done. Put yourself in her shoes for a minute. If a man like that had attacked me the way he did Lizzie, I would have done a lot worse to him. I need a moment. Another success. I never doubted myself. Things are beginning to become clearer. There is no use lying anymore. When you asked me yesterday about seeing someone out there, I thought the game was up. That does not explain what you were doing out there. When Lizzie took me to the study, the knife was still in the Major's chest, and I knew I had to get rid of it. I dropped it out of the window, knowing no one would be going outside. It was fine for the time being, but I couldn't risk it being found when the snow melted. So you collected it under the cover of darkness and stowed it away in here where you thought no one would find it. After your questioning in the pantry, I knew you were on to something, and I couldn't leave it here. And where did you plan on moving it to? Honestly, I don't know. There is no use. Why what? Why I would risk everything to help Lizzie? Exactement. Because she is family. If you were in that position, you would do the same. I can assure you, monsieur, that I would not. Then perhaps that says something about you, detective. I would do anything for her. For any of my staff. Even if it means crossing the boundaries of the law? Without question. Aye, Detective. But please, you have to help Lizzie. It was all an accident. She doesn't deserve to spend the rest of her days behind bars because of that man. If she is put behind bars, it is because that is what the courts have decided upon. Detective, you can't be so cruel. It is not cruelty, monsieur. It is the law.
are beginning to become clearer. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Another success. I never doubted myself. Magnifique. Detective Poirot, I'm glad you're awake. Bonjour, mademoiselle. It has certainly not been a night of peaceful sleep. There is something that we must discuss. Please, detective. I'm not sure I can take any more surprises like last night. I'm afraid this may be the most upsetting of them all. You have found Felix's killer, haven't you? I have. And the guilty party will certainly come as a shock. Detective, please. It was Mademoiselle Elizabeth that was behind the Major's death. You must be mistaken. Elizabeth would not, could not do such a thing. I assure you I am not. It is something I spent much of last night deliberating. When you spoke of the telephone lines being out of order, it made me question the conversation I thought I had heard Monsieur Sterling make with the Major before connecting the call to him. But it hasn't been working all weekend. Exactly, mademoiselle. That is when I knew I had once again been lied to. She was meant to be resting in the staff quarters. She has not been well. I am afraid that was yet another lie, orchestrated to keep her from incriminating herself. Why would you think that, detective? I only managed a few words with her, before we were quite abruptly interrupted by Monsieur Sterling. I must admit, he has a habit of speaking over the other staff. It was much more than merely disturbing our conversation. It was done with the intention to prevent Mademoiselle saying something that she should not. So, Elizabeth killed Felix, and then Archibald helped her cover it up? In its simplest form, oui. I have heard it directly from the horse's mouth. You have spoken with Elizabeth already? Did she admit to it? 
Not Elizabeth, but Monsieur Sterling. I wasn't. W what were you doing in there, detective? It was Monsieur Sterling that I found in there. I was taken by some surprise to hear anyone awake at that hour. What on earth was he doing? He claimed he was merely reminiscing of his time with the family. You don't believe him? It did not take long for me to uncover the truth of why he was there, and the location of the Major's murder weapon. Hidden area? A room that held all of the Major's secrets. I had no idea. Did you discover the reason for his blackmail? I did. Were you aware he was dishonorably discharged from the army? Dishonorably? What does that mean? Yes, Gideon told me about the conversation you had. It is really quite upsetting. Zachariah was adamant of the Major's cruelty during the war, but the extent was not known until now. He killed a number of prisoners, men that were friends of Zachariah. Surely not. He would not do such a thing. They must have been trying to escape. I am afraid not. They were in fact unarmed. Oh, detective. It is the reason he was discharged, denied his military pension, and I believe the reason he fled England. He had been such an important part of my life for so long, but I feel like I hardly knew him. Innocence? You said it was she that killed him. It was her hand that held the knife, but he was quite insistent it happened in self-defense. In all of the years I have known her, she has barely even raised her voice. I cannot believe she would do something like that out of malice. The whole truth cannot be known until Mademoiselle Elizabeth has told her story. Will you allow me to be present? I think that is an excellent idea. I hope your presence will calm her and will perhaps allow her to speak more freely. Please, detective. I know she has done a terrible thing, but I beg of you to give her the time to explain herself. I will offer Mademoiselle Elizabeth the fair trial that she deserves, as I would with any suspect. Thank you, Detective Poirot. Would you bring Mademoiselle Elizabeth to the study where we will not be disturbed? Of course. I'll find her immediately. Mademoiselle Elizabeth, merci for joining us. Miss Angeline said you requested to see me urgently. We have some serious matters to discuss, and I would like to waste no further time. Oh, yes, Detective. Still not quite myself. I was surprised when Monsieur Sterling hurried you to assist Madame Vandenbosch last night. I should not have avoided my duties for so long. The house does not stop because I'm feeling a little under the weather. That is true. But you cannot be expected to complete all your tasks if you are not in the right frame of mind. Honestly, Detective, it was best for me to not sit and wallow anymore. Have you been able to uncover who the blackmailer is? The blackmailer's identity has been established, and they will pay the price for their crimes. Wonderful news, Detective. You can put it all behind you now. You must be thrilled. I would not say thrilled knowing that such a close friend has betrayed us. Mademoiselle is correct. What I have learned over this weekend is that people are not always as they appear. While they may give an impression of being a friend or ally, they can in fact be something completely different. And, um, what of the Major's killer? Well, Mademoiselle, that is why I have asked you here now. I'm not quite sure what you want me to say, Detective. Your honest opinion is all I ask, and, s'il te plaît, do not hold back. No one else felt it necessary. 
We only spoke when there was something in the house to be done. We did not speak of interests or pastimes. You knew of his work with Monsieur Da Silva? I only know what is required of me to know, and that is very little. But you were aware of his work as security at Monsieur Da Silva's factory. I was. The factory your beloved Luke worked at before he was cruelly taken from this world. Yes, Detective. Yes, that is where he spent his last moments. Standing shoulder to shoulder with his fellow workers. The resulting riots were a terrible tragedy. One that I hope we will not have to see or experience again. Something that could have been avoided had the Major and his team done what was required of them. Nobody deserved to die that day. Not my Luke. Detective, what kind of question is that? It is a straightforward one. I... he... Mademoiselle, if there is something you wish to tell me, now is that time. I'm sorry, Detective, I just don't know how to answer it. Let us consider what we know of the Major. He fronted the militia that attacked the workers at the strike. You were aware of this? I... You finally had someone to blame for Luke's death. Someone conveniently located in the same house, alone in his study. No, Detective. It wasn't like that. Tell me what happened with the Major on the evening of his death. I was only in here trying to prove what I heard Mr. Becker say. I was going to report him, I swear. Miss Angeline, you believe me, don't you? I want to. I am still trying to understand it all myself. Why don't you start from the beginning? I was delivering Miss Angeline's dress to her room when I heard Mr. Becker's arguing with the Major in his study. They were ever so loud. I thought the whole house would have been listening to what they were saying. Mr. Becker's was talking about the factory strikes and how it was the Major's fault. He told him that if he didn't own up to his crimes, he would go to the newspapers. I cannot imagine the Major would have taken kindly to Monsieur Becker's threat. He didn't. He called him some rather uncouth names before Mr. Becker's left and went downstairs. I made sure to keep out of sight. After the altercation between the Major and Master Gideon, you went to speak with him outside, and I thought I could look around his study without anyone knowing. I had to know for sure. If it was true, he deserved to be held accountable. And did you find the proof you are looking for? I found a payment from Mr. De Silva, but there was nothing incriminating about that. I was so nervous. I felt like my heart was beating out of my chest. And then you saw the blackmail knot. I recognised the writing on the envelope. I couldn't believe it. How could he do such a thing to Angeline? To the family that had taken him in? Common sense would determine the Major was another victim of the blackmailer. If I'd have used common sense, I wouldn't have been snooping around alone in his study in the first place. I heard the footsteps in the hall, and before I could move, the Major was standing in front of me, demanding to know why I was going through his belongings without permission. I tried to come up with an excuse, but nothing came out, and when he saw the letter in my hand, it was like Dr. Jekyll turning into Mr. Hyde. I tried to move around him towards the door, but he hurled something towards me, and it crashed against the wall. That would explain the damage to the wall. I froze. I have never been so scared in all my life. I thought he was going to kill me there and then. And you thought you would beat him to it? Oh, Detective, you make it sound as though I had it all planned. He lunged forward and grabbed me by the arm. I tried to push him away, but he was too strong. His grip just got tighter and tighter. If only you had seen the look in his eyes, I dared not even scream. I saw the sheath on his belt. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't want to hurt him, but he wouldn't let go of me. So you took your opportunity to put an end to it all. I just wanted to get him off me. I didn't want to hurt him. I reached for it and I jabbed it at him. His grip instantly loosened and I ran straight out the door and didn't look back. You did not even look to see what state you had left him in? She had just been attacked, detective. Oui, please. Continue. I ran down to the pantry looking for Rahana. She took one look at me and knew something was wrong. I explained to her what had happened and she went to find Archie. She said he would know what to do. We went back to the study and he was still lying there. Motionless. Archie said that no one would believe me. That if someone like me killed someone like him, I would be sent straight to the gallows. He left the letter so you would find it. He said that if people knew what the Major was really like, then they wouldn't care what happened to him. So I am to believe that it was Monsieur Sterling and Mademoiselle Rayana 
that cleaned the scene and orchestrated a plan that included a fake telephone call and dressing as the Major so that he may be seen. You had nothing to do with that. I swear I had no idea that is what they had done. Archie just told me to stay out of sight. I am no master criminal. Then Monsieur Sterling and Mademoiselle Rayana will be charged for obstruction of justice and impeding my investigation. Please, Detective! They were only trying to help me! If they wished to help you, they should have brought all of this to my attention immediately instead of committing more illegal acts. Surely you haven't forgotten what happened with Florette. She was only accused of stealing a bracelet. I killed a man. It is a day I have not forgotten, Mademoiselle. Even for a moment. Without your help, I don't stand a chance. Please, Detective Huero, you are the only one that can help me. Oh, Elizabeth, why didn't you come to me? I didn't think you would believe me. I felt so guilty. And when it was announced yesterday that he was a victim of the blackmailer, I wanted to tell you everything. I came to find you last night, Detective, but Archie stopped me. I'm sorry. What a revelation! Oh, yes, Detective. I don't know where it is. If you have been honest with me until now, I ask that you continue. I'm sorry, I really don't know. Archie dropped it out of the study window and he said he would deal with it. I couldn't bear to touch the thing. I was only protecting myself. I didn't want to hurt him. He just wouldn't let me go. Oui, mademoiselle. I know. Mademoiselle tells quite the harrowing story. I cannot imagine the Major acting in such a way. But Elizabeth could not make up such a story. After learning what I have about the Major's character this weekend, I would not question the lengths he would go to in order to keep his secret hidden. I know that you share a close bond with Mademoiselle Elizabeth, but you cannot allow your personal feelings to taint your belief of what took place. She has committed a terrible crime, but she will live with that for the rest of her life. She is not a cold-blooded killer. If what she says of the Major's attack is true, she acted in self-defense, and in the law's eyes a crime has not been committed. I will do everything I can to make sure her story is heard and a fair trial is conducted. Mademoiselle, it is time I address the house. Are you sure? What will you say? What if they do not listen? I can assure you, they will. 
Elizabeth was right, though. She's just a servant. What if they... Mademoiselle, when Detective Poirot speaks, they will listen. Would you ask the guests to convene in the library? Of course. And what of the staff? I have told Monsieur Sterling to remain in the staff quarters with the others. When the authorities arrive, they shall be dealt with. You have been of great help to me throughout my investigation. And now that it is over, I have one final request. You only need to ask. While I am speaking with the guests in the library, would you watch over Mademoiselle Elizabeth in my room? You don't think she will try and escape, do you? In her position, I do not know what she might try. But I trust with you there, any potential ideas of such a thing will be squashed. Detective, you have spent more time making us sit and wait for you than anything else. Madame Vandenbosch, if you think I have spent my time focused on anything besides uncovering the Major's killer, you are sorely mistaken. I'm sure you will be eager to share your findings with us then. All in good time, Madame. Firstly, to understand the truth of what has occurred this weekend, one must know the timeline of events that not only preceded the Major's death, but succeeded. We are all well aware of what happened before, Detective. You can save your breath. You are only aware of what the guilty parties wanted you to believe. But now I shall apprise you to the true events. The reason for us all being here, you know. The altercation between Monsieur Demir and the Major, you know. The body of Monsieur Hagen was found while we were all sat enjoying a most delicious meal. That you also know. But what was kept from us all was that his body lay on the study floor for far longer than was thought. It was that servant! She found him! S'il te plaît, monsieur. It was indeed young Inga that found the Major's body lying lifeless in the study. So it was her! Monsieur, I will not allow for any further interruptions. Hmm. I return to the Major's body. If we are to believe the scene that we were presented with, the Major must have been killed during the first course of our meal, a meal that none of you left, even for a moment. Speaking in the evening, you all confirmed one another's alibis, and although there was doubt in the validity of some, I confirmed that they were indeed all true. What I could not understand was how a man came to be found dead, and every guest accounted for at the time of death. That is until I question the latter. Monsieur Beckers, I shall now allow you to speak. You saw the Major smoking a cigar in the snow. Is that true? It is. False. You saw what you were meant to see. Someone in the Major's coat, standing outside, giving the illusion that the Major was still very much alive. Monsieur Da Silva, on the afternoon of the Major's death, do you recall hearing a telephone ring? Now that you mention it, I have not heard a single ring all weekend. Correct. The telephone lines have been down for the duration of our stay. Meaning the telephone call that was received and promptly directed to the Major's study was yet another act of trickery and deceit. But it did not end there. When I entered the study for the first time, it was obvious someone had already been there and falsified the scene to stage a burglary and clear away important evidence, including the murder weapon. What followed was an investigation that had already been hindered. But even those lengths were not enough to derail me for long. I think we have all had enough of your self-praise, Detective. Perhaps you would like to tell us who killed him now? Madame, as I'm sure you would expect, it is not as simple as that. What many of you do not know is the discussion that was had between the Major and Monsieur Beckers earlier that day. What has that got to do with anything? I told you I didn't kill him! That I know to be true. What you do not know is that it was not only his ears that heard your spoken words. I hope you 
you are not implying I had something to do with it? No, madame. There was another. Mademoiselle Elizabeth. You are all aware that the Major was hired by Monsieur de Silva to front the security during the workers' strikes. What very few of you know is that it was the Major's order that instigated the vicious attacks on those unarmed men and resulted in numerous deaths, including Mademoiselle Elizabeth's fiancé, Luc. Monsieur Beckers confronted the Major, declaring that he was to hand himself in. That is what Mademoiselle Elizabeth overheard. Now, knowing the truth, she waited until the Major was away from his study. After he stepped outside following the confrontation with Monsieur Demir's fist, it looked to be the perfect opportunity, or so she thought. The Major returned and found her looking for the proof she required to hand him over to the authorities. If the maid bumped him off, why hasn't she been arrested? The events that followed in the study are not those of a cold-blooded murder, but one of a young girl that had no other option but to protect her own life. Sounds to me, detective, like you have taken a shine to this young girl and would rather protest her innocence than arrest her for murder, the crime she has committed. Jeez, this is going to make for a juicy story. Mademoiselle, I ask you this. You have seen the Major's anger before, oui? What if I have? How do you think he would have reacted if someone was to find proof that he had committed a terrible act and that, if made public, would surely result in his incarceration? Exactement. It is quite the story you have told, Detective, but all I have heard is that Elizabeth overheard a conversation blaming the Major for her fiancé's death, and she murdered him in revenge. A servant killing a man that is as revered as he was. She will face the noose. I am not denying that a man has lost his life, but it is not the crime of murder that you all believe. While the Major did not deserve to die in such a way, it was his actions towards Mademoiselle Elizabeth that drove her to defend herself in any way she could. Mademoiselle Elizabeth will be punished, but we will let the law decide the severity of her punishment. She has played you like a fiddle, detective, acting the innocent victim. She will be arrested and hanged for her crime, like every other cold-blooded killer. Uh, here, here. Give her what she deserves. The girl has got to pay for what she's done. Those of you that are calling for the hanging of Mademoiselle Elizabeth, have you forgotten the roles you played? Your actions have been far from innocent. Look, Detective, I see where you are going with this, but it's not going to work. So maybe the strikes were down to De Silva and Beckers. But don't try and drag me into their mistakes. Mademoiselle Conrad, if you are so confident of your innocence, perhaps we should begin with you. You don't need to imply it's only me that does. Ask any of my journalists, they'll say the same. Even if in the process people are hurt? You knew the situation surrounding the strikes and only sought to swell the anger in people and create further chaos. Mademoiselle, you so often have something to say. Now is not the time for silence. You really are delusional. Maybe you should just keep your theories and claims to yourself. You obviously have no idea what goes on in my world. I would say stick to honest police work, but it seems that it's not in your field either.
Look, it's... Mademoiselle, I do not have time for your excuses. Do you wish to state your direct involvement, or should I? It's not... I... Okay, fine. Yes, the story was going nowhere, there was a deal on the table, and it was going to be done and dusted. Everything you said is true. I wanted the story. The scoop that would have blown the others out of the water. I never wanted anyone to get hurt. But I can see what I did wasn't right. I didn't think you had this side in you. I can see now why Angeline asked for you personally. You're not like other cops. It's clear it's the law and doing the right thing through and through with you. If you say it was self-defense, I believe you. We can't just forget what that girl has done. It's not Jackie's fault, or any of ours, that she decided to do what she did. Monsieur Beckers, you are the last person I expected to defend Mademoiselle Conrad. We talked only last night, and correct me if I am wrong, but you have already declared the role you played. To me, at least. Yes, we talked. It's just not fair of you to attack Jackie like that, putting words in her mouth until she succumbs to your plan. Detective, I'm afraid you are misunderstood. That is not how it was. It was not my intention for things to escalate as they did. I could not have predicted that would happen. Jackie was documenting everything to do with the strikes. She wanted our story to be heard and wanted to know how I was handling the negotiations. And they were handled by yourself? Naturally. If I cannot handle simple negotiations, I am not fit to be in the position I am in. I was only pushing for what my men deserved, what they needed. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, Detective. Surely you must know that. Nothing is ever simple, Detective. I'm sure you understand that better than anyone. You're right, Detective. I have tried so hard to deny my part, but I know only too well that my decisions led to the death of those men. I know I cannot excuse what I've done. I just want you all to know that I am not a hateful or malicious man. I only wanted to prove that I was the right man. I have lived in other shadows for so long. I thought that I would be able to finally step into the light and be the one that everyone remembered, not forgot. Monsieur Da Silva offered me a deal, and I turned it down. I thought I was doing right by the workers, but it was only myself I was thinking about. What more proof do you need? He said it himself. I made a generous offer to reach a resolution, and he turned his nose up at it. It was not that simple, though. We, oui, an offer was made. But Monsieur Beckers and the workers would never have been forced into that position had their working conditions been satisfactory to begin with. This is outrageous! Do you plan on blaming everyone for doing their jobs? I suppose it makes you feel better about yourself, doesn't it? It may be a big deal to you, but I am used to workers not being happy with something. And most of the time, that unhappiness is directed at me. When you're in charge of your own factory, you'll understand. I handle the situation the best I could. If you think otherwise, maybe you have proved us all right that you aren't the great detective you claim to be. You said it, anonymous. I don't know them and it doesn't sound like they know me. When you have something people want, money, they will do anything, including constructing lies to get their hands on it. Monsieur Da Silva, you seem to have forgotten our previous conversations. I recall them just fine, thank you. 
A police officer trying to manipulate facts to fit his own agenda. Shocking. Do you really think this is the first time blame has fallen at my feet? Although I don't think I've seen someone try so hard before to even convince themselves of what they are saying. Have you not learned enough already from having your factories closed? If you have any hope to return to normality, you must admit your faults and accept the repercussions. I may have been a little harsh with my staff. I only wanted to prepare them for the realities of this world. I was never given the opportunities that they have today, and I succeeded. All they do is demand more and more at the factories and at the house. How am I meant to keep a good profit if every franc is going to them? I offered what I could. I was willing to meet in the middle, but maybe that wasn't enough. Swallowing one's pride is no easy feat, but if it means that a young girl will receive fair judgment, I am prepared to do it. Merci, monsieur, for your honesty. Admitting your responsibility is an honorable move. What now, detective? Is this absurdity going to continue much longer? Even after all your attempts, detective, Felix was still murdered. Self-defense or not, she chose to hide what she had done because she knew what she had done was wrong. And she will be punished for it. It was not choice to hide anything, madame. If in her position I ask, what would you have done? The Major has already furiously thrown an object at you, barely missing your head, and now has hold of your arm. I wouldn't have driven a knife into him, that I can tell you for sure. She is no fool. She intended to kill, not to defend. Quite presumptuous of you to assume violence is in his nature. Putting my own feelings towards the Major aside, he was not an honorable man, at least at some time in his life. He must have been for you to allow him in your house for so many years. So, even you confirm he had a history of aggression. You have no idea. He was there for us when we needed him. You were there for him when he needed free room and board. That is not the case, and you know it. His actions are unforgivable and should not be defended by anyone. You judge him so harshly, but I return the question. What would you have done in his position? He had made mistakes, I will not deny that. In those moments when a decision had to be made, it fell to him and he did what he saw fit. S'il te plaît, madame. I ask that you consider everything you know of the Major carefully. He was not always like that. The man that I called a friend would never have done what he has. I cannot allow another innocent person to be punished for his vicious and barbarous behavior. You have seen the Major act in a similar manner as I described before, haven't you? What was the outcome then? You have convinced me that I am wrong in both my opinion on Elizabeth's punishment and in the friendships I keep. Is that not enough for you? Not when a potential crime has been committed, and I fear an innocent party may have been punished for it. He was just a boy. I told him to stop, but he was like a wild animal. 
The confrontation with Mademoiselle Elizabeth was not the first time he has come close to killing another. It was following the officer's ball. A young man, no older than 16, stopped us on the street, begging for some change. Felix pushed him away, but he was persistent. He only wanted a few coins. Like a flash, Felix snapped and wouldn't let go of him. He would not stop punching him. I, I have never seen anything so brutal. But he was never charged for the attack. Felix called the captain at the station and said that the boy had tried to rob him and he was merely defending himself. The boy was thrown behind bars without a second thought. It was a full week before the bruises on Felix's knuckles finally faded. And even after witnessing such a brutal assault, you still support him? You still believe that he had not attacked Elizabeth? The days following, he showed no signs of remorse, no apology to him or to me. I blamed it on the amount he had had to drink. But when you began talking about him finding Elizabeth in his study, I somehow knew it had happened again. Had you been open about the Major's temper, this could all have been avoided. When you tell the courts the truth, Mademoiselle Elizabeth's self-defense plea cannot be ignored. Just when I thought I could not see a more spineless move. Excuse me? You allowed a bully and thug to remain in your house and endanger your family. I'm sorry, Margot, but I am struggling to understand why you have involved yourself in this affair. I'm surprised you can hear me way up there on that high horse of yours. How dare you speak to me in that way? Who I decide to keep in my house is my decision and no one else's. I can see that. Murderers, thieves and extortionists are all acceptable, it seems. Countess. I have talked at length of the Major's death, but not the reason for my invitation in the first place. When I last gathered you all together, I spoke of a blackmail ring that was rife in the area, and then of the letter that the Major had received. Mademoiselle Angeline requested my help personally after she received such a letter threatening her family name. She felt I was the only one that could uncover the truth. And uncover the truth I have. Get on with it, detective. Who dared try and extort my family and then have the gall to allow me to welcome them into my home? If it was not for the honesty of a young servant, I would perhaps still be looking for the cup. For goodness sake, it was me. Margot, how could you? While it looked as though the Countess was helping the young women at the shelter, she was, in fact, only finding them positions of employment in wealthy homes to gather information on them and learn secrets that she would ultimately be able to use against them. Monsieur da Silva fell victim to her network of moles and was in turn blackmailed. It was quite the prosperous setup you had, knowing that they would not be prepared to lose their social standing if a secret was to find its way from where it had been hidden for so long. That cannot be true, Marco. How could you do such a cruel thing? That is rich, coming from you. You are one of my oldest friends. High and mighty, Madame Vandenbosch. You think you can do what you wish, when you wish it, and there will be no repercussions. You are as bad as all of them. If I do not get a straight answer out of you, I will march you to the police station myself. I'm surprised it took the Major this long to start living with you. He must have been on the edge for some time. How dare you speak to me like that? In my own home! A home you share with the father of your daughter for so many years, and she still remains none the wiser. You have no right! Maman! Angeline? Have you heard what she has admitted to? 
She is merely trying to make herself... Is what she says true? Felix, he was my father? That is the secret that the letter was talking about, isn't it? You told me that we had nothing to hide. Detective Poirot, were you aware of this? Oui, mademoiselle. But it was not my place to repeat. I don't understand. What about father? Your mama betrayed the love of a good, honest man and played away behind his back and then kept it hidden for all these years like a lady of the night with her client list. Don't you will say no more. Angeline, I... Did Felix know? This is not an appropriate conversation. He knew, dear girl. He knew the whole time. It is only dear Edwin that was blind to their deceit. You will not talk of him like that. You will not talk of him at all. If I don't, who will? You never deserved him. You don't even deserve the memory of him. Countess, there is something that you still have not explained. What more is there for her to say? How long were you in love with the Viscount for? Margot? Is that true? We were destined to be together. And then you turned up. And I was all but forgotten about. But you were nothing more than friends. And you made sure of that, didn't you? From the day you arrived, it was all about what you wanted and what you had to do to get it. You didn't consider Edwin at all. He was just a purse to you. I loved my husband and I miss him every day. Loved him enough to stray? Both of you, no more. Please, Angeline, let me explain. Maman, I do not wish to hear anything else from you. Not even your own daughter wants to hear your lies anymore. Cassandra van den Bosch, all alone. How dare you! While I feel a sense of satisfaction and pride in solving both cases, there is still a part of me that is reluctant to revel in triumph. I am content with the unmasking of Comtesse de Vos as the blackmailer, and knowing that she will pay for her crimes. But it is the justice for Mademoiselle Elizabeth that worries me. She will stand in a court of law, and I can only hope that they can see she acted in self-defense. I must trust that our legal system and justice will prevail, and a fair sentencing will be given. In protecting her own life, she took the life of another, Perhaps the guilt she must live with is a greater punishment than any sentence she can receive. Countess de Vos was taken from Nemozine House in cuffs and placed under arrest. Although she initially tried to plead her innocence, Inga, along with a number of other girls that the Countess had found employment for, came forward and made full statements. She was charged with five counts of blackmail and extortion and sent to a house of corrections where she will have a new life to become accustomed to. Monsieur Sterling and Mademoiselle Rayana were also reprimanded for their participation. While they may not be facing time in prison, tampering with a crime scene and obstruction of a police investigation are certainly not something that houses and new employers will look positively on. Mademoiselle Angeline finally became Madame Demir, and together they took up residence in England, where Monsieur Demir continues to support and fight for fairness and equality in London. I am happy to say that we have remained in contact. And Madame Demir has become a regular correspondent of mine. And the latest joyous news is that they are expecting a child of their own. Madame Van den Bosch showed compassion that I had not seen in her before. She stood in court and gave a truthful and genuine character reference of Elizabeth. 
as well as describing the Major and the atrocious crimes he had committed. After Madame Vandenbosch's secret was revealed to the world, her position in the social hierarchy was no more, disappearing in a moment. While she still resides in Belgium, I believe she has had to adapt to a far more modest way of life. A humbling experience for her, I am sure. Following her actions in the courtroom, Angeline believed that her maman still had a place in her life. Although they are on different sides of La Manche, they remain in contact. Mademoiselle Conrad left Nemozine House the same way she entered, confident in herself and audacious in her opinions. Her report of the Major's murder at the house and the surrounding blackmails became one of the most talked about stories of the year. While there were certain details of her own involvement that did not make it to print, she was really quite complimentary about the detective at the heart of the case. Monsieur de Silva tried to continue in his position as factory owner and business entrepreneur, but after his accounts and business dealings were investigated following the details of his blackmail being made public in Mademoiselle Conrad's article, his illustrious business empire began to crumble and is now facing an international corporate investigation. Monsieur Beckers stepped down from his position as union leader, accepting that he was no longer fit to represent the workforce that in his words, he had let down on a scale of unmeasurable proportion. Although he is no longer the voice of the workers, he continues to support them from behind the scenes. Monsieur Zachariah and his brother made amends, and returning to his family home, and after sobering up, he was able to find the help that he required. I understand that he is now helping fellow soldiers with similar conditions. And Mademoiselle Elizabeth, she stood before a court and while the proceedings were deemed controversial, the charges against her were dropped and the reasoning of self-defense was accepted by the presiding judge. Madame Vandenbosch's testimony, along with Mademoiselle Angeline's declaration of her good character, was enough to show that it was not in Elizabeth's nature to act in such a violent way. The abundance of evidence against the Major and his violent and cruel nature, including his appalling acts during the strikes and the war, was more than enough to prove that Mademoiselle Elizabeth had no other option in that situation but to defend herself in any way that she could. With the new arrival of Madame and Monsieur Demir's child next year, they have agreed to give Elizabeth the opportunity to return home to England and take up a position in their home as nanny. The death of Elizabeth's beloved Luke has been at the center of everything. Had those in positions to help not acted with only themselves in mind, perhaps he would still be alive today and the Major would have paid the price for his own crimes in the eyes of the law, not at the blade of a knife. The blood of Major Felix Egan will remain on Elizabeth's hands, a stain that wherever she is and whatever she may do, she will never be able to wash clean. However, it will remain as a reminder to not only her, but all of us, of what we as human beings are capable of to protect ourselves. We all have something that may be considered shameful or sinful, and it is how we deal with it that shows our true character. Those involved in the riots, the workers' deaths, and the Major's killing believe themselves to be untouchable. Whether it was from their social standing or their confidence in themselves, they learned that everyone is accountable for their actions. There is no exemption because of the suit you wear or the money in your bank account. There is no price to a man's life. It cannot be bought or traded or discarded. No man is better than another, including Detective Hercule Poirot.
Those of you that are calling... Look, Detective, I... S Mademoiselle Conrad. To uncover truths. To show the world what it is really like out there. Why then do you go to such lengths to concoct and fabricate stories? Listen, Poirot, I am not going to stand here and be accused of something like that. You know how damaging that can be to one's reputation. You knew the situation surrounding the strikes and only sought to swell the anger in people and create further chaos. Mademoiselle, you so often have something to say. Now is not the time for silence. You really are delusional. Maybe you should just keep your theories and claims to yourself. Talking of sacrificing lives, have you forgotten what you have done? You know what it's like to get your hands dirty, Detective. You can't expect others not to do the same. Mademoiselle, I do not have time for your excuses. Do you wish to state your direct involvement, or should I? I'm sorry to disappoint you, Poirot, but I have done nothing wrong. I must say, though, you certainly put your heart and soul into it. All that matters is what happened in that room, and that was that Elizabeth stabbed him. What came before is irrelevant. She murdered him, and now she has to pay the price. Now is the time to admit your lapse of judgment. You allowed Mademoiselle Conrad to manipulate you like a puppet. Ridiculous! I told you already we spoke about the strikes, but she hardly had the authority to make me do anything. This is ridiculous. It was a peaceful strike. We only wanted what was deserved. Surely you do not think I sought to worsen the situation? Monsieur Beckers, you have taken the words from my mouth. Jackie was documenting everything to do with the strikes. She wanted our story to be heard and wanted to know how I was handling the negotiations. And they were handled by yourself? Naturally. If I cannot handle simple negotiations, I am not fit to be in the position I am in. No, it wasn't like that. This is not a tale that has been created. The facts I speak came directly from your mouth yesterday. Why is it you cannot admit she exploited your passion and desire for your men in front of the other guests? Nothing is ever simple, Detective. I'm sure you understand that better than anyone. You're right, Detective. I have tried so hard to deny my part, but I know only too well that my decisions led to the death of those men. I know I cannot excuse what I've done. I just want you all to know that I am not a hateful or malicious man. Monsieur de Silva of... What more proof do you need? It was not that simple. We, oui, an offer was made. This is outrageous! Me and my decisions. Detective, you are really clutching a thin air. Need I remind you, I am a successful businessman, and I had nothing to do with the Major's murder. If you think otherwise, maybe you have proved us all right that you aren't the great detective you claim to be. Do your worst, detective. I have spent years building my name, my reputation. This is all just a feeble attempt to strike some kind of fear into me. Monsieur da Silva, you seem to have forgot- I... Is that what you plan to do? Accuse us all of something until we feel enough guilt that we agree to allow the girl to walk free. The events that led to the Major's murder are not as simple as you have tried to convince yourself. I have uncovered what initiated both the murder of your workers and of the Major. It is you that refuses to accept the truth. Apparently anyone can become a detective now. I really don't know how you gained your title. Through order and... Order? 
There is no order in beating down who you consider suspects until they have no other option but to admit something, guilty or not. Monsieur da Silva, you have stood steadfast, and your opinion on your involvement has not wavered. Detective, you would do well not to anger my friends. It was not my intention. I only want those responsible to be held accountable for their actions. The Major's death does not fall on one person alone. Does your position on Mademoiselle Elizabeth's guilt remain the same? Even after all your attempts, Detective, Felix was still murdered. Self-defense or not, sh It was not choice. I wouldn't have driven... He was a passionate man. Her sometimes conversations and arguments turned heated, yes. So, even you confirm... I'm sure that is none of my business. Likewise, it is none of yours. The Major shot and killed a number of unarmed prisoners as they were bound and terrified, posing no threat. His actions are unforgivable and should not be defended by anyone. You judge him so harshly, but I return the question. What would you have done in his position? He had made mistakes, I will not deny that. In those moments when a decision had to be made, it fell to him and he did what he saw fit. You do not know what he had been through. S'il te plaît, madame. I ask that you consider everything you know of the Major carefully. My friend has been murdered in cold blood, and you have the gall to ask me to save her? I will see to it that your superiors know of your crooked tendencies and wavering morals. Elizabeth will hang for this. There is no more a fitting punishment for her crime. I knew that you had a cold heart. But never would I have expected to see you turn on a young girl so cruelly. Excuse me? She may have been the one that held the knife. But look at the monster that stood before her. It could not be clearer the type of man... No, I shall refrain from offending men everywhere. The type of creature that he was. He bribed, he extorted, he murdered. And yet when he attacks a young girl and she does us a favor and stops him for good, she is punished. I'm sorry, Margot, but I am struggling to understand why you have involved yourself in this affair. Because that girl does not deserve your judgment. You should be ashamed of yourself. You all should be for allowing this to happen. Countess, I have talked at length of the Major's death but not the reason for my invitation in the first place. When I last gathered you all together, I spoke of a blackmail ring that was rife in the area, and then of the letter that the Major had received. Mademoiselle Angeline requested my help personally after she received such a letter threatening her family name. She felt I was the only one that could uncover the truth. And uncover the truth, I have. Get on with it, detective! Who dared try and extort my family and then have the gall to allow me to welcome them into my home? If it was not for the honesty of a young servant, I would perhaps still be looking for the... For goodness sake, it was me. Margot, how could you? While it looked as though the Countess was helping the young women at the shelter, she... Monsieur the... That cannot be true. That is rich. You are one of high and... If I do... I'm surprised it... How? A home you sh... You have no right. Maman. Angeline. Have you heard what she has admitted to? She is merely trying to make herself... Is what she says true? Felix... He was my father? That is the secret that the letter was talking about, isn't it? You told me that we had nothing to hide. Detective Poirot, were you aware of this? Oui, mademoiselle. But it was not my place to repeat. 
I don't understand. What about father? Your mama betrayed the love of a good, honest man and played away behind his back and then kept it hidden for all these years like a lady of the night with her client list. Don't you say no more. Angeline, I... I... Did Felix know? This is not an appropriate conversation. He knew, dear girl. He knew the whole time. It is only dear Edwin that was blind to their deceit. You will not talk of him like that. You will not talk of him at all. If I don't, who will? You never deserved him. You don't even deserve the memory of him. Countess, there is something that you still have not explained. What more is there for her to say? How long were you in love with the Viscount for? Marco? Is that true? We were destined to be together. And then you turned up. And I was all but forgotten about. But you were nothing more than friends. And you made sure of that, didn't you? From the day you arrived, it was all about what you wanted and what you had to do to get it. You didn't consider Edwin at all. He was just a purse to you. I loved my husband. And I miss him every day. Loved him enough to stray? Both of you, no more. Please, Angeline, let me explain. Maman, I do not wish to hear anything else from you. Not even your own daughter wants to hear your lies anymore. Cassandra van den Bosch, all alone. How dare you! While I feel a sense of satisfaction and pride in solving both cases, there is still a part of me that is reluctant to revel in triumph. I am content with the unmasking of Comtesse de Vos as the blackmailer, and knowing that she will pay for her crimes. But it is the justice for Mademoiselle Elizabeth that worries me. She will stand in a court of law, and I can only hope that they can see she acted in self-defense. I must trust that our legal system and justice will prevail, and a fair sentencing will be given. In protecting her own life, she took the life of another, Perhaps the guilt she must live with is a greater punishment than any sentence she can receive. Countess de Vos was taken from Nemozine House in cuffs and placed under arrest. Although she initially tried to plead her innocence, Inga, along with a number of other girls that the Countess had found employment for, came forward and made full statements. She was charged with five counts of blackmail and extortion and sent to a house of corrections where she will have a new life to become accustomed to. Monsieur Sterling and Mademoiselle Rayana were also reprimanded for their participation. While they may not be facing time in prison, tampering with a crime scene and obstruction of a police investigation are certainly not something that houses and new employers will look positively on. Mademoiselle Angeline finally became Madame Demir, and together they took up residence in England, where Monsieur Demir continues to support and fight for fairness and equality in London. I am happy to say that we have remained in contact, and Madame Demir has become a regular correspondent of mine, and the latest joyous news is that they are expecting a child of their own. After Madame Vandenbosch's secret was revealed to the world, her position in the social hierarchy was no more, disappearing in a moment. While she still resides in Belgium, I believe she has had to adapt to a far more modest way of life. A humbling experience for her, I am sure. Madame Demir has not mentioned her maman in a single letter. After the discovery of her real father and how she had been lied to for so many years, I am not surprised if her departure from Belgium was somewhat an act of separation from her maman. 
Mademoiselle Conrad left Nemozine House the same way she entered, confident in herself and audacious in her opinions. Her report of the Major's murder at the house and the surrounding blackmails became one of the most talked about stories of the year. While there were certain details of her own involvement that did not make it to print, she was really quite complimentary about the detective at the heart of the case. Monsieur de Silva tried to continue in his position as factory owner and business entrepreneur, but after his accounts and business dealings were investigated following the details of his blackmail being made public in Mademoiselle Conrad's article, his illustrious business empire began to crumble and is now facing an international corporate investigation. Monsieur Becker stepped down from his position as union leader, accepting that he was no longer fit to represent the workforce that, in his words, he had let down on a scale of unmeasurable proportion. Although he is no longer the voice of the workers, he continues to support them from behind the scenes. Monsieur Zachariah and his brother made amends, and returning to his family home, and after sobering up, he was able to find the help that he required. I understand that he is now helping fellow soldiers with similar conditions. And Mademoiselle Elizabeth. She stood before a court and was found guilty of second-degree murder. She was sentenced to time in a female correctional house on the outskirts of the city. Alone in a foreign country with no friends or family for support, it will certainly be a hard life for her there. Her mental and physical strength will surely be tested to their limits. But she could not go unpunished. Without repercussions, we would become a society of animals. The death of Elizabeth's beloved Luke has been at the center of everything. Had those in positions to help not acted with only themselves in mind, perhaps he would still be alive today and the Major would have paid the price for his own crimes in the eyes of the law not at the blade of a knife. The blood of Major Felix Egan will remain on Elizabeth's hands. A stain that wherever she is and whatever she may do, she will never be able to wash clean. However, it will remain as a reminder to not only her, but all of us, of what we as human beings are capable of to protect ourselves. We all have something that may be considered shameful or sinful, and it is how we deal with it that shows our true character. Those involved in the riots, the workers' deaths, and the Major's killing believe themselves to be untouchable. Whether it was from their social standing or their confidence in themselves, they learned that everyone is accountable for their actions. There is no exemption because of the suit you wear or the money in your bank account. There is no price to a man's life. It cannot be bought or traded or discarded. No man is better than another, including Detective Hercule Poirot.